I was 10 years old. My brother and I were the last ones off the bus from school every day. We were nearing my house, which is in the Midwest countryside. Lots of cows and trees and fields, stuff like that. Anyway, about a mile away from my house, I look out the window and I see an orange blimp in the sky. Standard American football shaped blimp. Surprisingly, I didn't think anything of it. Because a day or so before that, a bunch of kids and I at recess saw a blue blimp in the sky. I watched it, thought it was cool to see a blimp this far outside of town, especially near my house, and wasn't about to think another thing of it. After a few seconds, the blimp shifted from a football shape to a star, literally just shrunk before my eyes into a tiny, shiny dot that resembled a star in the night sky. Except it wasn't a star. It was just a blimp a second ago. Not even two seconds after it shifted, it launched even farther into the sky, shot down to its original height, and then shot completely off into space. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever experienced. I was a quiet kid, but being the last kid on the bus besides my brother, I shouted about it. When I got off the bus, I ran to my mother to tell her, like a crazy old man yelling about the end times. My mother said that I was crazy, naturally, and I never told my dad, because my mom shut me down pretty hard and it killed my mood. Fast forward years later, shortly after I turned 22, my dad and I took a short road trip to go pick up a car he bought halfway across the state. We talked about a lot and somehow got on the topic of UFOs. He told me that when he was 12 or 13, he and his brothers were playing down by a creek near their house, which by the way, was only a few miles away from our house. They saw an orange football shaped object in the sky. I was absolutely blown away when he said that. My father is skeptical and doesn't believe in this kind of stuff, ever. But when I shared my story, he paused and said that it was very odd to have seen the exact same thing behave the exact same way more than 30 years apart. I'm currently visiting York, Maine for a family reunion. We're renting a house about a mile from the Nubble Lighthouse, if anyone cares to look up the location. This house has a wraparound porch with a front door and a side door right before the porch ends and the stairs lead to the backyard. The side door has a very recognizable sound. It almost sounds like somebody passing gas. We joked about it the first night there. The front door creaks like any other old door and slams on the frame. You can hear the wood, then the rubber liner on the door squeeze shut against the frame. Anyway, the first night we got settled in, we all went up to bed around midnight. It's a three bedroom house with very thin walls. You can hear conversations happening in the kitchen from the upstairs bedrooms, and every floorboard creaks with any movement. My mom and dad went up to bed first, followed by my brother, my girlfriend and I followed about 15 minutes later. The other night, I'm upstairs in my room waiting for my girlfriend to get out of the bathroom. I hear a creak and a slam from downstairs, and the vibration through the house of a door hitting the frame. At first I thought it was my dad coming in from a smoke, but I listened and I could hear him snoring in his bedroom. Once my girlfriend got back, I asked her if she dropped anything. She said that she hadn't, but she thought I had fallen off the bed or something because the noise was so loud and shook the house. Kind of creepy, but I didn't think much of it again until last night. 
Around 12.30 to 1 in the morning, the same door creak and slam noise occurred at roughly the same time. And after this second time, keeping me wide awake, I decided to ask the rest of my family if they were up and about in the middle of the night. My parents deny walking around downstairs, and my brother then tells me he's been sleeping with his light on every night, since the very first, because he would hear soft footsteps and feel a presence standing at the back of his room. We're going to have a quieter evening tonight and keep an ear to the downstairs area before bed to see if we hear anything else. I'm also considering laying in my brother's room in the dark to see if I hear or feel anything out of the ordinary. If anybody has any experience with this and may know how to stimulate more action, please let me know. I love paranormal things, but up to this point in my life, this is the closest I've ever been to experiencing any. I wish I had more to the story, but this is what we've been going through so far. Over the course of two years, I've had weird dreams about a very specific creature lurking in the attic. It always felt malevolent. Now I don't know if it's an actual thing or my subconscious messing with me, but it deeply unsettled me in ways that my dreams almost never do. As somebody who is always aware that they're dreaming, even dreams where I'm being hunted down don't scare me, but this does. There have been so many dreams about it, but a few stick in my head. The least threatening one was a dream where I'm playing video games in my room. I glance out of my bedroom door, and I see an arm dangling from the open attic. The hand moves like it's beckoning me to come closer. I don't, because, obviously, but I watch it. It never leaves the attic, but it keeps trying to get me to go to it. Another dream, I'm in a house I've never been in. My sister and nieces are in this house with me, and I get the impression that this thing is threatening my family. I'm angry, so I get vocally aggressive. I get my family out of there and go back to confront the thing. I see it for the first time in all the dreams that I've had. It was a woman with light purple skin and dreadlocks. I don't remember how this dream ended, but there were more dreams after, never including my family again, just me. The most intense encounter I had was a dream where the attic was right above the bed I was sleeping in. I was lying there, very aware that it was watching me. I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. Wrong. It slowly pulled the covers off of me. After a few minutes of lying there, cold, Trying to decide if it was safe to pull the blanket back up, it grabs me by the throat and lifts me up about a foot off the bed and starts choking me. I felt like my lungs were going to burst when it let go and let me fall back onto the bed, gasping for breath. I don't know how many dreams I've had since this one, but I know it's been at least a year since I dreamt about it. I'm very uneasy around addicts now, and I always expect to look up and see it again when I pass underneath one, awake or not. Even right now, I keep throwing glances at the attic door right outside my bedroom. Nothing's there, of course, but it's still on my mind. If this thing is not my subconscious and it's an actual entity, I have no idea what it could be. In my limited experience with the paranormal, I've never encountered anything that felt malevolent before just this. My hope is that either my brain just decided it wanted to be terrified of addicts, or that this thing got bored with me and left me forever. Over the years, several friends and I have experienced an odd phenomenon while traveling around the state. We live in Michigan, by the way. 
On multiple occasions, we have inexplicably lost hours, and we've never been able to determine why. Sometimes I was alone, and other times a friend was with me. One of the most vivid instances, from approximately seven years ago, still unnerves me. Back then, I was living in Flint, Michigan, with my parents, about a year before relocating to Grand Haven. My friend and I decided to go camping in the Beulah, Frankfurt area, a journey that typically took between three to three and a half hours. We were no strangers to this route. We had made this trip numerous times over the years, especially since my family owned a lake house on Platte Lake, and we spent every summer there during my childhood. Wanting to maximize our time, we left Flint at three in the morning, hoping to get in some early morning fly fishing upon our arrival. Roughly two thirds of the way, on M115, just north of Cadillac, a peculiar calm enveloped the surroundings. Now, M115 runs through a national forest, so tranquility is the norm, but this calm was different. It was almost eerie. The early morning sun began to cast its first light, slowly illuminating the surroundings. Before we knew it, we were nearing the US 31 intersection in Benzonia. A glance at the car's clock showed 12 p.m., a detail my friend also observed. Doubting the car's clock, I checked my cell phone, which confirmed the time. Even a bank sign we passed displayed the same. The reality was hard to grasp. We had anticipated our arrival around 6 to 6.30 a.m., but here we were, six hours behind schedule. Fatigue wasn't to blame. I had had ample sleep the previous day, and with over 120,000 miles driven annually, I was accustomed to long hauls. Plus, both of us were well acquainted with the route. Our gas tank was still nearly full, indicating we hadn't just been driving aimlessly. Checking our credit card statements later, we found no gas charges during the missing hours. The truck's mileage aligned for the expected distance of our trip. What's most baffling is how seamless the time loss felt. We had no memory of any extended stops or detours. Our journey, by all accounts, felt typical in duration, but the clocks told a different story. Our next story was posted to r slash paranormal by accomplished row 520. She tells the tale of what happened when she met a strange mourner at her great aunt's funeral. Here's the story. Years ago, when my great aunt passed, at her funeral there was this old man. He was wearing a suit, and he had a neck tattoo of an octopus. He had long hair and a ponytail. He kind of looked a little bit like Jack Welker from Breaking Bad. He started talking to me about my grandma and told me to take care of her and grandpa for a few minutes. Then gave me a dollar and asked me nicely to go to the vending machine and get him a water because he came to pay his respects and he had to keep going. He even knew my name, but I had never met him before and I hadn't given it to him. When I came back to give him the water bottle, I couldn't find him. I looked everywhere and I even asked my grandparents if they had seen an older man around anywhere and I described what he looked like. When we got home, my grandparents came over and they were looking at family photo albums and they saw the man that I described, the one that asked for a water, in the pictures. They yelled at me to come downstairs and showed me the picture and pointed to him. They asked if it was the man I had seen, and I said it was. He looked exactly the same. They told me that it was my great aunt's ex-husband, Robert, who had been dead for 20 years. That's how he knew my name. He had died well before I was born, 
And like I said, I wasn't that close with my great aunt, so I hadn't ever really heard about him. Either way, Robert had been dead for over 20 years. I didn't sleep for at least a week, maybe more. God, the faces they made still send shivers down my spine. It was like they were watching somebody get killed in front of them when they heard about what happened to me and realized who it had been. They told me he was a good person, and he and my great aunt regularly attended church and were just overall good people. I would say that I'm kind of religious, but I don't know. So more than likely, he wasn't up to anything evil, I guess. I suppose he asked for the water so I would go away and he could disappear. He really loved his wife. I guess when he said he had to move on, it's because he had to take her to the next life or something. They asked me if I spent the dollar, and I said I did. I kind of wonder what would have happened if I had kept it, or what happened to whoever wound up with it. Either way, it was a very unsettling and strange experience, if not kind of sweet. This happened in 2018, in December, just before Christmas. Two of my friends and I, we were 17 at the time, and a cousin of mine who was 15, were camping in the woods. It was on the property of one of the friends that had come along. We were there for five days, and pretty much did it all by ourselves, except for water. That we would hike back to the house to grab for the day since it was pretty impractical to get water ourselves for five days. This region was relatively dry, with no water filters or anything like that. We'd lie down pretty early, which felt rather primitive, literally when the sun set. Every night we would hear boar around our tent and steps. Paranoia fueled it a lot, but we had a bow, two axes, and some big knives. One day though, and I think this was either the last night or the second to last, we were just having a chat after dinner, like we would often do, and we hear a scream. It was pretty odd. It didn't sound human, but I have no clue what animal would be doing it either. I know a fair amount of our country's fauna. I've heard a lot of their screams, but this one was just different. The scream sounded like it had a buildup, not like a scream where you immediately hear the loudest part and then it dies off, but like it started low, got really intense, and then stopped. It sounded far enough, say 50 to 70 meters or so, but then it happens again, and again, and again. Now, suddenly, it's coming from almost all sides, and it was getting pretty close. It didn't sound super menacing, even though we were really scared, shooting my air gun with no rounds just to make a sound. It got to the point where the sound seemed like it was coming right to where the campfire couldn't shed light, just outside of what we could see. I remember that we had set up some traps for rabbits down the trail that day. So we gathered all the strength and courage that we could and we went there. The bait was gone, but the traps were unarmed. And that was a stupid idea anyway. Rabbits don't scream like that. We had some pretty strong flashlights, but we couldn't see a thing. All of a sudden, the sounds just stopped with no clear reason. It was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. And anytime somebody asks me for a scary story, I share this one. Also, where I live in Portugal, we don't have any cougars or anything like that that typically screams. Maybe there's no explanation, I don't know. But all I know is that it terrified me and I still think about it to this day. Before I begin, let me give you some background. 
I was about 13 at the time, not under the influence of any narcotics or medications, nor have I taken any mind-altering substances since then. I had just come back from a class trip to Washington, D.C. It was late, maybe around 7 or 8 at night. My father picked me up at the airport, and we began driving home on the highway. And that's when I saw it. It was an unknown distance away, and looked close and far at the same time. It was a gray steel color, and had... Well, it was honestly very stereotypical for the most part. It was in the shape of, like, ravioli. It was a round, perfectly circular, ravioli shape with a bulge on both sides of the middle, and a ring of lights around it. The lights were all large, and gave off a light that was very hard to describe. They were blue, yellow, and white, all at the same time. And yet they didn't give off any kind of flare or beam, and when the craft moved, they didn't give a typical trail that you would get when looking at a light moving out of a car window. Now, the craft moved so perfectly, it looked as if it wasn't moving at all. It matched the exact speed of our car, which, if you've ever driven down I-95, is really quite an impressive task. I tried to get my father's attention because I needed some confirmation that I was indeed seeing what I was seeing. In those days, things were a bit strained between us due to some issues at home. So he grumpily brushed me off and kept driving. It felt like this went on for a while, but after the event, I realized it couldn't have been more than a few minutes due to the time on the dashboard clock. Things got very odd very quickly. The craft, while keeping perfectly matched with our car, started moving on its side where it was nearly impossible to see except for the bulges. It then did something that I will truly never forget. It split in half, but in a way that was so mechanically perfect, I knew right then it wasn't man-made. The way it split was as it was moving, and there was no jittering or stalling or any evidence of anything mechanical that could have allowed it to separate, let alone be held together in the first place. After it split, for a few moments it kept pace with the car. Then each half, while still on its side, shot across the sky at blinding speeds in separate directions. And that's the story. Make of it what you will, but I swear by this sighting. It was an amazing experience that showed me we truly understand nothing about our universe. I think I had an experience with a skinwalker or its kin. I wonder how far their territory ranges. I lived in Phoenix for a couple of years at the turn of the century. I had two friends who grew up in Globe, a guy and a girl. She wanted to do a spell to make it rain. We went to a place on the Salt River. I don't know what it was called, but it had a parking lot, a pavilion, a bathroom, and the river had concrete steps in it, like man-made rapids. The pavilion had a concrete dais in the middle of it, inlaid with a mosaic of a compass rose. We got there at about 9 p.m. or so, well after dark, only two cars in the parking lot, and they were dusty, no other people. While we were doing our spell, which was minimal, all three of us standing quietly, concentrating around a candle and incense, I heard a noise. It was men and women laughing in unison, then two voices speaking very quickly, but I couldn't understand the words. And then a canine howl. My hair stood on end. We all jerked our heads toward the parking lot and stood stock still for a minute but we didn't see anything or hear anything else. So we went back to concentrating. I didn't think the voices were weird in the moment. I figured the people that owned the cars had come back. I did think the howl was odd coupled with the voices, but I was thinking, cool, I got to hear a coyote. 
So after we finished the spell, we started wondering where the people were. And as we started talking, we realized that of the three of us, the girl had heard the speaking voices, the guy had heard the laughing, but I was the only one who had heard both or the howl. When I told them what I'd heard, they both got really pale. Their whole demeanor changed to alarm and they said, we have to get out of here right now. I said, okay, but I have to pee first. They were very upset by this, but the bathroom was right by us. I went, but they were banging on the door in total panic after I'd been in there 30 seconds. I thought they were being overly dramatic. So we made it to the car and they're acting like we're in a horror movie. We left without further incident. After we got on the road, I asked them why they were so upset. They said that there were things that lived out there that I didn't want to know about. Apparently people who live in Globe have to deal with this kind of thing a lot, based on more stories the guy told me about living there. He never mentioned the word skinwalker though. I read about them later and finally understood why they were so scared that night. Okay, so this is a story that took place when I was around eight years old in my neighborhood. I was next door neighbors with my best friend, Alex. We both went to the same school and always hung out every day after school. One day, I was bringing my Nintendo 64 to his house so that we could play together. Once I got into his house, his uncle was there watching the television so we couldn't use it. Today, I now know that he wasn't his uncle because my older sibling, who knew Alex's older sibling, told me that his parents rented out rooms to random people from their original hometown. So the uncle was just a random stranger from out of the country. He told us to go into his shed and search for an extra TV. So we opened the shed and started searching. We found an older television, but we couldn't use it. Then something started moving all the things around. We thought it was a rat, so at first we didn't mind. But then we heard laughter, something so scary that I tried to leave, but Alex told me not to worry. We kept searching around for the laughter and we eventually found this one doll that was around two feet tall. It was torn and battered, so we figured it was just broken. We just sat it down and decided to go hook up the television we'd found in his room. We played for a while until his uncle left the house for food and his parents were at work, so we were home alone. We started hearing noises at the house, but figured it was nothing. But then we heard the laughter. The doll was moving around the house carefully, which we saw through the small peak underneath the closed door. The doll was looking for something, which was probably us. We were both freaking out, but we knew we had to get away from the house. We opened the window and jumped out and ran toward my house. Somehow, the doll managed to look at us as we were running away through the window and just laugh. We stayed at my house all afternoon until his parents came home. Ever since that day, I've always had experiences, weird things at my friend's house, like having YouTube videos end abruptly and start playing other random things like clown videos. I think it's a serial commercial from the 70s. I ignored all of these weird signs for the rest of my childhood. And recently we met up for a while since departing to different high schools. Somehow the topic of the weird things was brought up and I asked if he remembered all those things. He did remember, which now makes me want to share the story because apparently it wasn't just my imagination.
This isn't my story, but it's something that happened to my parents just a bit ago. They live in Western New York, upstate, and are really open to all kinds of supernatural stuff. My dad has reason to believe in aliens for reasons other than this encounter, but that's a story for another day. It might be a good time to add here that my parents do not use drugs or alcohol, and they're very sharp as far as memory, cognizance, and intuition go. I'm going to copy and paste a message that my mom sent me and just read it for you, if that's okay. I just figured I'd put some feelers out there and see if anybody else has experienced something similar or has any sort of explanation. Quote, Last weekend, we were coming back from Jamestown. Dad and I saw a freaking UFO or something. Between Randolph and Steinberg, there was this huge, really bright light blinking on and off in the sky directly in front of us. And it was falling from the sky, except it was shooting directly downward. I thought it was a falling star at first, but after it blinked repeatedly, I thought, that is not a falling star. And even though I thought that it might have been a plane, I knew that it was too bright and going too fast to be one. Plus, as far as I know, planes don't make a habit of going straight down. Then all of a sudden, it was gone, like mid-sky. And I thought, well, it must have gone behind a hill or a mountain or into the trees. So right then I said, did you see that? And dad goes, what the F was that? He said that he was thinking the same things that I was. And at the same time, we both noticed there are no hills. There is no mountain. There's nothing for this thing to go behind. It was just cornfields and open space. This thing just disappeared. Next thing you know, it was directly behind us, mid sky. And it shot directly upward, back up into the sky. I was looking out my rear view mirror and it lit up the whole sky, like an aura all around. But the brightness of it was still really bright white. Dad was turned around watching it, and it started following us. We had that same eerie feeling we had when we saw the Bigfoot that one time, and we were saying, what the F is that? All of a sudden, it just disappeared. They have no idea what it was that they experienced. And yes, they do also have a Bigfoot sighting, but that's a story for another day as well. Either way, they've been trying to figure out what in the world they saw. So I thought I'd share their story and see if anybody else had any ideas. My grandma used to work at an Aramark factory in Chicago, close to downtown. I don't know the exact address, because I think they changed locations. My grandma's job was to iron the fabric that would come through the machines. One time, she went upstairs to the washroom with her friend. Only two could leave the line at a time. So my grandma was in the stall next to her friend doing their business, when through the cracks, they both see the shadow of a man with a fedora and the long coat, but they didn't see any legs. My grandma didn't know if her friend saw it and her friend didn't know if she had seen it. So they started to wash their hands and they heard a man cough. They hurried to leave, took a long flight of stairs to get to their work area, but never said a word to anybody. Not even to each other. At lunchtime, though, they did talk about the event. Comparing notes, they both saw and heard the same thing. So they asked this lady who had worked there for a really long time about it. She said that they heard those stories all the time, that it was either Al Capone or one of his associates. It wasn't that specific warehouse, but around that area was where he would do all of his business, where they would arrange meetings. My mom also worked there, and she said that one time the shift was ending, so all the women tried to be the first to leave. They said that once they got to the main doors, 
Everybody saw a huge black dog, like a Rottweiler, but with a huge collar. And he was just barking and barking. The dog wouldn't stop. They called the boss and unfortunately, the boss tried to hit the dog with a stick, but it didn't even hurt him. He wouldn't back away at all. Then finally, on a whim, the dog just ran away. The lady said that they should check the cameras or something because maybe some gangbangers or people up to no good tried to sick the dog on them. The next day, the boss checks the cameras and you can't even see the dog. They see the women by the door. You see the boss moving the stick and hitting the air, but there's no dog anywhere. Other times, people would see the dog around the parking lot but there would be a gate because it was kind of in a bad neighborhood. So he couldn't have jumped or walked in or out. This was in the 90s when it was pretty bad down there. So nobody understands how the dog could have gotten into such a heavily gated property. To this day though, the weirdest thing is why that dog never showed up on the camera. I've had over a week to think about this, and I can't come up with a satisfactory, rational explanation. I live in the north coast of Northern Ireland, not far from the Giant's Causeway, just to give some reference that people might know. Just over a week ago, I was sitting watching television with my wife. I sit by one of the windows sometimes because there's a plug-in for my laptop there. My wife was sitting on the other sofa, so she couldn't see out of this particular window. It was around 8.30 and perfectly dark outside. If I looked out, I could see the lights of our local town, Ballymoney. It's tiny, more of a village, really. Just us at the scene, we're about three miles out, surrounded by farmland. Anyway, I'm watching TV and occasionally glancing out the window when suddenly I see this bright light just over the fields. It's multicolored and it kind of blooms, growing larger. At first I thought it was a firework, which would have been bizarre enough in late March in the middle of the lockdown, except it's too slow, if that makes sense. It brightened into maybe three different colors. It was hard to judge distances in the dark, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it was two acres or more away and larger than a family car, hanging maybe 80 to 100 feet up, pretty low. Eventually, it faded and disappeared again, not behaving anything like a firework and far too large to be a flare. I said at the time that I thought I had seen somebody letting off fireworks. A few minutes later, I glanced out again and there's a smaller light roving around in the same spot, but it vanished almost the moment I looked at it. This light was maybe a third of the size of the original and was moving left to right. I've thought about it ever since. The annual Ballymoney Town firework display is much further away and we can always hear it from home. Yet this was soundless. Helicopters and drones don't have lights like that. And again, if there had been a chopper out there so low and so close, we'd have heard it. A drone still strikes me as most likely. We wouldn't have heard it inside the house, and I guess it might have been rigged with powerful lights, but they would have had to have been incredibly powerful. So, I don't know. I've never, ever seen or heard a drone over that area in the daytime, and I'm out there all the time. Honestly, I think maybe I saw a UFO. No lights in the sky were reported in local news or on social media though, and I haven't seen anything since, so who knows? I moved into my house about two years ago. 
it's a generally decent sized property with 14 and a half acres. I don't hate this house, but it is 100% cursed. I've always felt really uneasy going into the wooded area of this property. I would never go in there alone because I got really scared. I know that sounds very childish, but hear me out. There's a small abandoned cottage or shed in the woods, and that's the part that's always made me feel very faint, going within a five to 10 foot radius of it. There didn't seem to be anything particularly odd about this building, and there was nothing around it. A couple of months went by and I decided to go in alone, just to face my fear of those woods. I came upon the building and stayed on the trail so I wouldn't get dizzy and start to faint. This in particular scared the living bejesus out of me because I was looking at the building and I saw a woman circling it, humming lullabies and calling out for something. I think she was between the height of maybe 5'10 and 6 foot, with dark hair that went down to about her hips and very pale skin. She was wearing a long white dress or nightgown that went down to her ankles and held a children's toy in her hand. I called out, hello? And she just stared at me, still humming and circling the building, but looking at me. I made the very dumb decision to step into that five to 10 foot radius and she lunged for me. I started running for my life out of the woods and she just kept chasing me. The second I stepped outside the tree line though, I turned around and she was gone. It wasn't until later that I was reflecting on it and I thought, wait a minute, I recognized that toy she was holding. I had the exact same one when I was little. After that, I started to go back She's not always there when I go into the woods, but when she is, she's always holding a different children's toy, all of which were toys or plushies that I had as a kid or grew up with in my home. One of them was a big plush that I've had since I was born. I still have it because it's kind of my comfort item, but hers was an exact duplicate. That's what scared me the most. I'm pretty sure I'm not crazy. So my only conclusion is that I'm dealing with something very paranormal. My first ever encounter was when I was around seven and my family was all around the table. I will never forget the order we sat in, nor what happened. My mother sat in front of me while my sister was beside me. Father was next to mom and my back was turned to the kitchen. My brother sat next to my mom in front of my sister, a family of five. We were eating and then the window straight across from my dad at the right of my direction shone with a very bright light. Everyone seemed frozen, but my mom and I. My mom told me to run, run and hide. My mind was blanked out and I didn't think at all. I just got up and ran to my mother's room where I felt my mind was telling me would be the safest place. Once I entered my mom's room, I went straight to her king size bed with a huge light underneath. There was nothing under my mom's bed because she kept everything in bins at the foot of her bed and closet. The foot of my mother's bed was facing the door while the head was against a wall next to two big windows. Then it was her closet across from where you were laying so you could see it. Then the bathroom was right next to that. Once I got under the bed, I saw that the light was still on. I looked through the cracks and it was quiet. And then I saw about six sets of feet that were not human. Then I felt them start to surround me. One almost touched me by getting on the bed and reaching down through the crack. There were two through the crack, three in front, not showing their faces, but trying to reach further under. One was at the foot of the bed. 
Then I looked near me and saw a face that was gray and had huge eyes. I felt like I couldn't move, but when I looked closer, I saw a whole galaxy in its eyes. It was so pretty how the colors merged like a sunset, and for a second I almost forgot it was an eye. Then it moved or flinched and I came to my senses. I looked around and they were still moving to get me, while the one that I looked at was staying still and looking at the closet. Then I heard the closet door opened and I saw Nega. Nega was my childhood imaginary friend that taught me the greater lessons than what is now being slowly forgotten. After seeing her, I relaxed and I saw them try to fight. And then the tall gray-like humanoids were gone. I looked at Nega and then I looked at the bathroom to see another creature that had orange eyes that I know commonly stays in my mother's bathroom. Nega hushed me, and then I seemed to have forgotten what had happened until I turned 14. After this, I just carried on with life. I never saw my imaginary friend again, but old friend still lingers from time to time in my memories. My family owns a large piece of land in Missouri. It's near the highlands, but partially on the plains. It includes a lovely little chapel, a one-room schoolhouse, stables, and the plantation home. My family has owned the land for years. I grew up spending school breaks there. It was always enjoyable, regardless of the hard work I had to put in. Every Halloween, my family would do a local hayride and barbecue. It was great fun and everyone loved it. We decorated the entire property. The schoolhouse had all the original desks and materials left in it. So we tried to utilize it the most and the plantation home secondly. It wasn't super structurally sound, so we kept everybody on the first floor. Only family was allowed on the upper floors. Us cousins loved to set up and clean for the big night. The stables were a working area, so we left that to the adults. Nobody went inside the chapel because we wanted to make sure that it stayed in its original good condition. So we'd put up a fake little graveyard and that was about it. The school was abandoned and the house was a walkthrough. When I was 16, I was helping set up the walkthrough. It was cheesy, but fun. I was cleaning the ornate mirrors on the first floor when I heard laughter above me. Figuring it was my cousins, I kept working. I would hear the footsteps of them moving and their laughter for a while. When I got done, I called up that I was going to go help outside and I heard, all right, see you later, and more laughter. I walked out smiling because I found it cute that they were so immersed in the home. Imagine my confusion then, when I walked into all four cousins at the main house. I asked them how they had beaten me back, and they looked at me like I'd finally lost it. They told me that they'd been working on the chapel graveyard, and they'd been nowhere near the walkthrough. I told them it wasn't nice to try to trick me. We left it at that and continued on for the day. I only realized we weren't alone when I got a call from my youngest cousin, asking why I was running around upstairs in the plantation home. I got deathly quiet. When she asked me again, I could only say, I'm not even on the property. I'm in town. To this day, we've never figured out who exactly lives upstairs. They don't cause harm, but they do enjoy their mischief. Anymore, we keep in constant contact when we're visiting just to be sure we know who we're dealing with, or what. This is a memory that I have about my family going to the hospital in which I was about to be born. 
I recently started thinking about this memory again for some reason. It's just something that I cannot find a logical explanation for, considering that I'm a hyper-skeptical guy. The memory is seeing my dad and other family members walking their way out of my grandma's house, where we used to live, to see my mom give birth, my birth, at the hospital. I can perfectly recall how my dad was dressed that day. For the rest of my family, it's kind of a blurred image. My dad was wearing a black blazer and blue tie with pink diagonal stripes, black jeans, and a lighter blue shirt. I remember even how he was walking while smiling, a pretty detailed and vivid sequence of images. So as expected a couple of years ago, I might have been 20 at the time, I'm 28 now, I was going to tell him about this weird memory. But before that, I decided to ask him first about how he was dressed the day of my birth, to make sure he didn't just go along with the memory to fool me. And yes, you guessed it, it was the exact same way that I remember. He said he perfectly remembers since he planned it beforehand what he was going to wear for the day of my birth. I freaked out so hard. I would ask myself how this is even possible. It just doesn't make any sense. So I started trying to figure this all out, and I came up with a theory. I later dismissed it, but... My family used to record my cousins and I all the time in childhood with this old camera and then put them on VHS tapes. So I started thinking that maybe an uncle of mine or someone else had recorded that moment of my family on the way to the hospital. So I decided to go over all the tapes that I had, plus it's fun watching them. But no, I didn't find anything even remotely close to that image that I had in my mind. Plus, after re-watching my life series on these tapes, I realized they started recording after I turned one year old. So, yeah, one-year-old me tapes were the oldest tapes made, nothing before that. Another thing that I realized, the way that I remember this scene of my family couldn't be recorded in this weird angle and perspective. It was like I was looking at them, walking, but also being careful to not be seen kind of hiding a little bit behind a wall. Kind of an odd way to record something, right? So that's my story about this weird yet accurate and vivid memory that I have before I was even born. I'm still trying to make sense out of it. Every time I start thinking about it, I can't stop until I sleep. My hometown is small and remote, and we had a Native American reservation a few minutes outside of town. I was close to a lot of the people that lived there, mostly the teenagers and children, as they shared extracurricular activities through the school, so I grew pretty accustomed to their beliefs. Now, I moved pretty far away right before I started high school, but I visited somewhat frequently, as I still had family there. My grandmother owned a camp on a small lake. It was very quaint and nice to spend time there. However, as soon as it became dark out, things felt very different. On one side, we had neighbors for miles. On the other, it was dense woods. My cousins and I, one a year older and one a year younger, had always found those woods creepy. We visited now and then, but always became very uncomfortable and soon left. One night, I was traveling back home, down south with my cousins and my aunt. These were very remote lake roads, inhabited by very, very few. Dense woods bordered both sides, so, naturally, some nocturnal animals were out. But one that we saw was very different. It wasn't as big as I typically see these creatures described, but it wasn't small either. Maybe the size of a large coyote or a small wolf. And we don't live in wolf country, by the way. But it didn't look like either of those. It was crouched back on its hind legs, just kind of chilling out. As we drove past, it turned its head to look at us. 
It had a pretty blank face, almost like an owl's, but without the beak, and a bear's muzzle instead. Its body looked like a poor rendition of a human, like if you asked someone to draw a person but they had never seen one before. Its legs bent the wrong way, like a horse almost. It had toes like an alpaca. Its arms were very long, and frankly, it was the most human thing about it. It had very patchy, wiry, matted fur. Now, I know it wasn't an animal with mange. I've seen many animals with mange. And yes, it's scary, but it was nothing like this thing. It didn't necessarily chase us, but it trotted behind us for a while. Everybody was freaking out, naturally. But I think deep down, I knew. Can I get any confirmation or information about what this might have been? And if so, are there any precautions I should take to keep this thing away? It happened years ago, but I'm still lost. Just this weekend, my cousins from the city in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, visited me and my family down here in Southern Pennsylvania, near Maryland. We live in the boondocks, and there are many trails for people who enjoy horseback riding and taking rides on ATVs. When my cousins got to my house, we decided to go exploring toward my neighbor's house, who lives in the middle of the woods, isolated in a log cabin. We walked a trail the whole way up there for about a mile, joking along the way. Let me give you a little backstory about the place. Back in the 1800s, there was a bar and a few small cabins for people to stay in. A group of men got drunk one night and attempted to shoot bottles off of each other's heads. People died, and the wives of the men who had died burned down the bar and the cabins then were later hanged by the bar owners. This happened right below where we were exploring. Legend says that the women and the people who died in the fires still lurk around the forest. Another incident took place in the 80s or 90s. A teen was driving really fast with his friend at that exact same location as where the bar incident took place. The teen crashed into a tree, beheading his friend believing him alive. The teen was tried for manslaughter as he was driving drunk. This place is destined for bad luck. So we're exploring on this trail, approaching the house. As we approached, we heard a very distant whistle, but we thought nothing of it. As it is spring and it was warm on this day, so there were birds around. But when we stopped to take a break, we heard twigs snap. We all froze as a giant branch fell, and then the tree. It was a dead tree that was easy to push down. I looked behind and saw a human figure. As it set in with my brain, I realized that it was a man in ripped, ragged overalls that had no more color, and a worn-out, colorless plaid flannel. He looked no older than forty. He looked at us for a while, and then ran at us with a bat-like stick while laughing like a maniac. We ran the other way until we got cut off by an electrical fence. Then we turned the other way. By this time, we were way off trail and in the middle of the woods. But I knew that all I had to do was go down to get back on trail. By the time we got the trail, we lost him. He looked real enough to us. But whether he was a spirit or a real person, we're never going back up there again. My grandmother would always tell me about knocking that she would hear, either a few days before or moments before somebody close to her would pass away. It would usually be around three knocks, in no particular place, 
She said that she would sometimes hear it at the back door, behind the wall, or coming from outside. My grandmother had always kind of had this weird gift to see and experience things that were, I guess, paranormal for lack of a better word. She would always tell me her experiences, and me, being not the bravest person on earth, would get so scared I wouldn't be able to sleep well for days. I always thought the knocks were interesting whenever she told me about them, because not long after, it usually happened, someone would die, or she would complain for days that she wasn't sleeping. Then the knocks would happen, as well as other weird things. I was very open to the idea of these knocks due to the fact that evidently people sometimes passed away after, and I believed that things like that could happen. Last year, the three knocks happened to me. It was a Friday morning, and that entire week, my grandmother's sister, Sari, was fighting COVID in a hospital. Sari was the second closest thing to a grandmother for me, so I had a great love for her. I wouldn't say we were close, but there was that grandmotherly love that she had always given me. When I woke up, I was still between that state of being very sleepy, but also fully aware of my surroundings, as I wasn't asleep. I know that I had my back to the door of my room when I heard three faint but audible knocks on my door. I opened my mouth to say, yes, and then it hit me like a train that I heard absolutely nobody walk to the door or open any of the doors we had in the hallway. And trust me when I say I have the loudest family, so I should have heard someone or something. My body froze and a chill went right down my back. For a good minute, I was too terrified to move. I laid in bed for a while to listen if anybody would maybe walk away or open the door to confirm that it was indeed one of my family members, but nothing, just silence after that. I even thought maybe it was my brother trying to scare me, but long story short, exactly three days later after I heard the three knocks, my grandmother's sister, sorry, passed away in the morning. The whole experience freaked me out and I still struggled to comprehend what happened, but it did. There's probably a logical explanation but the fact that she died a while after really scared me, and it made me think about what my grandmother had always told me. So I'll keep this kind of brief, as I know talking about these creatures is somewhat dangerous. My hometown is small and remote, and we had a Native American reservation a few minutes out of town. I was close to a lot of those people, mostly the teenagers and children, as they shared extracurricular activities through the school, so I grew pretty accustomed to their beliefs. Now I moved pretty far away right before I started high school but I visited somewhat frequently, as I still had family there. My grandmother owned a camp on a small lake. It was very quaint and nice to spend time there. However, as soon as it became dark out, things felt very different. On one side, we had neighbors for miles. On the other, it was dense woods. My cousins, one a year older and one a year younger than me and I, had always found these woods creepy. We visited now and then, but always became very uncomfortable and soon left. One night, I was traveling back home down south with my cousins and my aunt. These were very remote lake roads, inhabited by very, very few. Dense woods bordered both sides, so naturally some nocturnal animals were out. But one we saw was very, very different. It wasn't as big as I typically see these creatures described, but it wasn't small either. Maybe the size of a large coyote or a small wolf, and we don't live in wolf country. But it didn't look like either of those. It was wrong. It was crouched back on its hind legs, just kind of chilling out. As we drove past, it turned its head to look at us. It had a pretty blank face, 
almost like an owl's, but without the beak, and a bear's muzzle instead. Its body looked like a poor rendition of a human, like if you asked a person to draw a person if they'd never seen one before. Its legs were bent the wrong way, almost like a horse. It had toes like an alpaca. Its arms were very long, and the most human-like thing about it. It had very patchy, wiry, and matted fur. I know that it was not an animal with mange. I have seen animals with mange, and yes, it's scary, but it was nothing like this. It didn't really chase us, but it trotted behind us for a while. Everybody was freaking out, naturally, but I think deep down, I knew. Can I get any confirmation or information about what this might be? And if so, any precautions I should take to keep it away? It happened years ago, but I'm still just lost. So at the time, I'm about eight years old, and my mom got remarried, and she was on her way to her honeymoon with my new stepdad. I went to my cousin's house, out in the middle of the woods, near a really old coal mine, with only a gravel road to get there. Just for perspective, the driveway is about 50 yards long, and it's in direct sight of the front door. When I get there, nothing seems wrong, it's nighttime. I'm playing Wii with my cousin, and he gets tired and falls asleep. We're sleeping in the living room, which has the front door in it, and the door was mostly glass. So we're laying on the floor, and I have direct vision through the front door. It's about midnight, and I can't sleep. My mom is in a different country, and I miss her being eight years old, so I just look out the door laying there, kind of zoning out. About 10 minutes later, I see something walking up the driveway. It looks like a shadow, but it's white looking. It also looks like it has a pickaxe in its hand. I'm thinking, how can a shadow be white? It just doesn't make sense. And who would be outside right now with a pickaxe? At this point, I'm petrified because it stops about halfway, so about 25 yards from me, and just starts hitting nothing with the pickaxe. Eventually, it stops swinging after 20 or so swings and walks back down the driveway, and I never saw it again. When I say it swings at nothing, I mean it. There was nothing there for it to hit, and it didn't make a sound. I just saw this person hitting the air with a pickaxe. After it walked down the driveway, I never saw it again. I'm 20 years old now, and I still think about this. Reliving it in my head makes me feel uneasy. It gives me chilling goosebumps, and it honestly makes my eyes water. I was too scared to say anything and I only started telling people what I saw around the age of 15 or 16. That's when my cousin told me that he had seen the same thing before when he was little, and he never saw it again either. Most people have theorized to me that it was residual energy of a coal miner acting out his job. Perhaps where the house was used to be an extension of the mine, or maybe there were rocks or ore that they chopped up, who knows, but Either way, I get goosebumps every time I think about him. Four years after my dad died, I was going through an amicable divorce, or at least it seemed so at the time. I was actually happier than I had been in a decade, and I was looking forward to the future. One morning, I woke up, grabbed my cell phone off the charger, and walked toward the kitchen. Just as I was going to swipe my phone open, a phone call was coming through. 
but all it said was incoming call. It didn't show a name or a number. I was already mid-swipe, so the call was answered. I put it to my ear and said, Hello? The reply, Hey girl, was my dad's voice. It sounded like my dad was far away. I was completely taken off guard, but at the same time I was cool and calm. I said, Daddy? He said, Yes, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to make sure you're okay. I said, I'm fine, are you okay? And he said he was. Then he said, I have to go now. I'll call again, I love you. I said, okay daddy, I love you too. I'll talk to you later. He said, bye. And then silence. I took the phone away from my ear and it had gone back to the home screen. When I looked in the call log, the call didn't appear. I couldn't figure it out, and I thought about it constantly. A week later, my soon-to-be ex came into my house and started kicking things and ranting. I tried to close my bedroom door to shut him off from us, but he shoved it open and hurt my hand. I grabbed my phone and called the police, and so he quickly left. He never came back after that night, but I was on high alert after that and finally installed an alarm just in case he ever decided to break in. The day after my ex did that, I told my mom about the call from dad the week before and about my ex coming into the house the past night. She said that my dad had never trusted my ex and always thought that he had done something on purpose years before that hurt me, even though at the time I thought it had been an accident. My dad had never said a word to me about his feelings toward my then husband, so this was news to me. The best we could speculate was that my dad was worried that my ex was going to hurt me. So somehow from the other side, he called to check on me. It was just weird that we never acknowledged the elephant in the room like, hey, you're dead, or hey, I think your ex is a sneaky, dangerous person who wishes to harm you. I guess if my dad ever calls again, I'll know there may be something he wants me to know. So I plan on asking more questions instead of being so dumbfounded by a phone call from a dead person. Our Yellowstone journey began in California with seven adults. We caught a flight to Salt Lake City, Utah and from there drove to Henry Lake, Idaho, where we had arranged to stay in a cabin. We arrived at the cabin, which was sizable, around five o'clock p.m. on the first day. The ground floor housed a living room, a kitchen, a master bedroom, and a dining room, with a set of stairs on either side leading to the upper level. Additionally, there were entrances from outside into the kitchen and outside the master bedroom apart from the main entrance that opened into the living room. The upper level comprised about four bedrooms and three bathrooms. The cabin had an old, rustic feel to it. Our first evening at the cabin was uneventful. However, as night fell, an eerie feeling took hold. My husband and I retired to one of the upstairs bedrooms, while two other couples occupied the master bedrooms downstairs and upstairs. The only single member of our group took the bedroom next to ours. Given our plan to set off early for Yellowstone the next day, we all turned in for the night around 11 o'clock p.m. No sooner had my husband and I hit the sack that we fell into a deep sleep. However, I was jolted awake by a scream, which turned out to be my own. Simultaneously, my husband also woke up screaming. Although I have had instances of crying in my sleep due to nightmares, this was the first time I had screamed, and I distinctly remember not having any dreams or nightmares that night. As for my husband, it was highly unusual for him to have a nightmare, let alone wake up screaming. Our friend in the adjacent room, who was on a call, heard our screams and rushed to check on us. We assured him that we were okay, if not confused, and tried to get back to sleep. 
but I spent the rest of the night battling strange feelings, unable to sleep until the first rays of sunlight peeked through the window. The next morning, we were all up at around nine o'clock in the morning, discussing the previous night's incident. The other two couples, unaware of our midnight ordeal, reported hearing random footsteps throughout the night. Thankfully, no other strange incidents occurred during our five-day stay. Yet, the cabin radiated a considerable amount of negative energy, and none of us were keen on spending more time there than necessary. We would leave early in the morning and return late at night, using the cabin merely as a space to sleep. Thankfully, we haven't experienced anything similar since then. When this Redditor was traveling through Valley Forge National Park, they decided to pull over to capture the gorgeous moon. What happened next was an experience they've not yet forgotten. Here's the story. Sometime last year, we experienced a unique lunar event. I believe it was called the Super Blood Moon, but whatever it was called, it was absolutely enormous. It lit up the sky, was larger than any moon I had ever seen before, and it was beautiful. During this event, I was traveling through Valley Forge National Park at about nine o'clock at night. Admiring the moon, I decided I wanted to take a picture of it, if I could do so safely. Fortunately, up on my right, I saw a parking area that still had its gate open. I pulled in so as to be safely out of the road, but only so far. I didn't want to go all the way into the lot for some reason. I stopped my car, exited the vehicle, and pulled out my phone. Kneeling down, I began to set up for my shot. The moon in view, I lifted my finger to take the photo and stopped. Every hair on the back of my neck was standing on end. Without warning and seemingly without reason, I felt an intense feeling of dread come over me. I felt as though a crowd of people was pressing in on every side, inching ever closer to me, some close enough to reach out and touch me. I closed my eyes for a moment and then turned around. Nothing. Facing the blackness did nothing to calm my nerves, though. In fact, seeing no visible reason for my fear only intensified it. Something in me felt as though I had pinpointed the source. I just couldn't see it. Not wanting to miss my chance to catch a photo of this beautiful moon, though, I turned around to face the camera once more. My hands shook, and I said into the night, I just want to take a picture of the moon, and then I'll be leaving, I promise. After saying this, I felt a slight reprieve in the oppressive feeling and took two photos. Neither was in focus, though, and at that point I was so terrified that all I could think of was leaving. Cutting my losses on the shot, I took my phone and tripod, my two blurry photos, and scrambled to get back into the car. Throwing the car in reverse, I got out of that area as fast as I could. To this day, I have never stopped there again at night, and I don't intend to. I wanted to share a few UFO encounters that I've had. The first was when I was about 11. I was riding home with my dad in the car. I looked out the window and saw a ship. It was shaped more like a small city, black with multiple spires. I told my dad and he saw it as well and gunned it home. The odd part was his reaction, which is connected to the next encounter. I asked about the ship and he went ape shit. started screaming about nothing being there and that we never saw anything, even though he described it when I pointed it out. 
Fast forward to about four years ago, which makes me around 34 years old at the time. I was at work at the hotel and the housekeeper calls me over. It's Veterans Day, so I figure she wants me to check out the parade. Instead, she points out a white sphere in the sky. We stare at it and it moves at an insane speed, then splits into six smaller spheres. I tell her, congratulations on your first UFO sighting. It keeps moving around the parade and I tell her not to worry. It's probably just observing. The thing is, when I asked her later if any more weird stuff came out, I got the same reaction. Total freak out screaming about not seeing anything and it not being real. It was like the mind couldn't handle the situation and completely melted down. This final one is a bit more interesting. I had let my dogs out at night for a potty break, then a head count as they came back inside. Before I went in, I noticed a star bigger than the others. Not being a runner, I stayed put. It got closer and I got a better look. It was a four pointed star with mini points about the size of a pressure cooker, all pulsating different colors. I decided to try some telepathy. I mean, I didn't do anything fancy like cross my legs and say om. I just thought in my head, like you do when you have a grocery list. I asked it if it meant any harm. Give me red for no and green for yes. I got a red for no. I asked if it came from the stars. It turned green. I asked if it was just here for recon. Again, green. Finally, I thought, okay, you can be on your way. And it flew higher and farther. My point on the last one is to try to stay calm. It might scare you, but it's the best way to remember what you saw. I didn't get any missing time or the usual stuff like strange markings. It was just an odd encounter. This just might be one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. My family and I had just moved into a little house, nothing too fancy. We'd only been living there for a few weeks when paranormal things started happening as soon as we entered the attic. It was like we disturbed the demon or spirit when we went in there. Everyone who went up there had a bad feeling about it. At first, I was the only one who realized what was happening. I remember me laying in bed everything a silent stone. I was peacefully watching TV, and then I heard whispering in my closet, which was right in front of me. As I laid there, paralyzed, I remember thinking to myself that I could get up and slowly check. Keep in mind, I was only seven or eight. As I sat there negotiating with myself, I finally was persuaded to go and check. It sounded like at least five people whispering. But as soon as I opened the closet door, nobody was there. The only thing there was all my clothes, but they were swaying back and forth. And it couldn't have been the wind or anything like that, because I checked if the closet doors had made a little wind and the clothes didn't move. This went on every night for about two weeks. Then my family started to catch on. My grandma had been staying at the house visiting and had to sleep in my room with the dog. The next morning, my grandma tells me that my dog was growling at the closet all night and that something evil was in there. After that, the whispers stopped, but the weird noises, things being out of place and things like that didn't quit. After a while, we got used to it, but that's when things just got worse. This one night, I had to take a shower and I went to bed as usual. No whispers or anything, I just went straight to sleep. The next morning, I woke up with three scratches down my stomach. I thought it was the dog at first, but this is the weird part. My mom and grandma both described it as if it looked like something went inside me and scratched me from the inside out. At seven or eight years old, I got a little freaked out by that. After that occurred, we blessed the house, but things just didn't stop. My mom and I rode our bikes to the store. And when we got back, we saw a little girl standing in our backyard. 
So we searched for her, thinking she was lost or something, but we found nothing. Our yard was fenced in, too, so I'm not sure how a little girl would have gotten there. Then after that, things stopped. I mean, we would occasionally get a few things here or there, but nothing too serious. A few years passed, and we eventually moved out. I don't know what it was. A demon, a lost spirit. I'm just glad I don't have to deal with it anymore. One night, a long time ago, in the mid-80s, I was riding around my hometown at about 10 p.m. with three other friends. Berkeley County, South Carolina was really country back in the day, so driving around at night on dirt roads is one of the things kids did to have some fun. The place we were driving to was called the Gravel Hill Light. It was down a long dirt road in the middle of the Francis Marion National Forest. There were no street lights of any kind and no houses for miles. Up until that point, I had seen the light a few times, and even to this day, nobody knows what it is. I know it's so bright that it's almost like a welder's torch, but about a hundred times bigger. There's no sound at all, and it disappears as soon as it appears. Anyway, this night we were on our way to see the light. We would usually park our car where the dirt road divides into another road, and after 10 or 15 minutes, the light would appear. We were driving and we hadn't even made it halfway yet to the place where the road divides, when we saw in the distance a red glowing light with fog and the outline of a body standing way down in the middle of the road. We had to drive slow, like 25 miles an hour, because of all the potholes in the road. We were curious, and we all said, what's that, at the same time? Then the glow turned off for about two seconds and came back on. This time, there were three to four figures standing in front of the red glow, and this time, they seemed to be about 50 feet closer to us than before. They were in contorted positions, but not moving at all. The light went off again, and two seconds later, it came on. Again, they were much closer to us, and this time, there were about 10 figures silhouetted against this light, all standing in weird positions. I began screaming, Turn the car around, now, I mean now. Everybody in the car quickly agreed to turn around and get out of there, which is exactly what we did. Back then, I always thought of the figure standing there as ghosts, but nowadays, I'm thinking more alien than ghosts. At 18 years old in the 80s, it just never occurred to me that it could have been alien, but now, it makes so much more sense. My friends and I really haven't talked about this since it happened. I was never sure whether I should believe in the paranormal or not. Sure, I'd heard strange noises home alone at night or felt the energy in the house shift to something more sinister in a matter of seconds. But what I experienced in August of 2021 convinced me. It's taken a long time to process what I had experienced. I've mostly tried to pretend that it didn't happen. And to be honest, I really wish it hadn't. For context, last August, I had moved into the guest bedroom in our basement. I'm 15, and having the entire basement to myself for most of the day and all night was awesome. I immediately began to regret my decision, though, as I discovered how unsettling the energy in my basement is. It's really hard to explain, but it just feels off, especially at night. 
I was literally always on edge whenever I was down there. Sleeping was quite difficult, as I was never really calm. I often felt an overwhelming presence watching over me, and I was really hating my decision. But I knew my mom would be upset if I changed my mind so soon, so I endured the hell I was living in. I quickly need to describe the layout of my basement so you can understand where everything is taking place. Once you enter my basement, there's a large living area. Attached to that is a hallway that leads to where I've been sleeping. So I woke up at around one to two in the morning to the sounds of about four voices in the living area of the basement. I could never actually make out what they were talking about, maybe because I had just woken up, but I'm pretty sure they were speaking in another language or maybe very broken English. As I was listening to the voices, I heard quiet footsteps approaching my door. The only way that I was sure they were footsteps was because the floor in our basement, especially in the hallway, is very creaky. I pulled the covers over my head and shut my eyes. I fell asleep almost immediately and nothing else happened that night. I've also felt people touch me in the basement, but usually those experiences are comforting. I usually believe that to be my father who passed away in 2015, as I've only felt those when I'm sad or angry still paranormal, but unrelated to the experience I just told you about. Either way, that experience in the basement terrified me, and I'm still not sure how to explain it. I served in Marja, Helmand province during 2010 to 2011, where I had a series of strange experiences. Among them, I saw the mysterious lights in the sky that another person had reported, but one incident in particular struck absolute terror into me. One night, I was standing guard at my post alone, sometime between 0200 and 0400. The night was uncharacteristically quiet, which was strange given that there were usually dogs barking and goats randomly screaming. My post was situated at the northeast corner of our forward operating base, or FOB, isolated and a good 100 yards plus from the next post. Built on part of a mud wall enclosing the compound, the post was like an enclosed treehouse, elevated about 15 feet high. A sturdy roof allowed for an additional vantage point. Nearby was a mud hut where some Afghan security guards slept. I was immersed in thought, sipping on rippets and pondering my life choices, when suddenly I heard something running along the wall behind me. Since the wall was only a foot thick, it would be impossible for a person to run atop it. The sound was not like a dog's. It was more of a noise, like the tapping of talons. As it reached the section of concertina wire near the top of the wall, the creature leaped onto the roof of my post, stomping its feet right above my head. It sounded like a full-grown man intentionally intimidating me. Then, just as swiftly, it sprinted full speed, leaping onto the roof of the mud hut where the Afghan guard slept and disappearing into the darkness. I didn't see it, but I heard it, and I felt its presence. Panic set in, and I found myself frantically scanning with the thermal sights of my 240B machine gun, but I couldn't locate the creature anywhere. I was certain it was neither human nor animal. Its movements were too different, too deliberate. It was as if a large man had been stomping, but the way it leaped off was so rapid and fluid, as though it knew precisely where to go. That experience marked the most frightened I have ever been in my life, and until now, I have never shared it with anyone. The memory of that night continues to haunt me, an unexplained encounter 
that, as far as I'm concerned, defies all logic and reason. I'm first off, I'm currently 51 years old, and this still bothers me to this day. I have quite a few stories throughout my life to share, but this is the first. I was living in a new state, which I had never been to before. This was in the era where our parents told us to go out and play and be back at dinner time. I was nine years old in 1979, and we had just moved to Dallas, Texas. I was playing outside by myself, and I was approached by another young girl. She seemed normal and asked to play with me. I was okay with it. She asked if I wanted to see her playroom. I didn't see any reason not to, and I followed her. Mind you, we lived in a townhouse that looked like row houses, so we went into her townhouse, and I never saw anyone in the house, just the two of us. The townhouse looked normal enough, we went upstairs and into a bedroom that looked like a little girl's room. She walked up to the wall and pushed a panel, which opened. She crawled in and, stupid me, I followed. Inside was this amazing room full of toys and a little black kitten she was holding. I was so taken by all that was in front of me and I was just excited to play. We played for a bit. However, in the secret room, there were no windows or natural lighting. I couldn't tell what time it was. Eventually, I felt uncomfortable, like I needed to get home. So I told her I had to go, mind you never once asking for her name or telling her mine. But she turned to me with dark eyes and asked me by name if I really wanted to go because it was fun here in the room. I was creeped out because I know I didn't tell her my name. I crawled out and she followed me. I just kept moving down the stairs to the door, trying to avoid looking back. But once I opened the door, I did look back, and to me she looked like part girl and part skeleton. So I ran home, as it was dusk and I knew I was going to get in trouble. I didn't say anything about it to my mom. I went about my evening and slept like normal. But the next day, I was disturbed by it, and I decided to go back and see if she was still there. When I walked down to the townhome, it was boarded up like there'd been a fire there. I stood back and looked at it for a while, knowing that I had been in there yesterday, and it looked normal. I never saw or heard anything about that little girl again. I wish I had told someone who could have found out if she ever lived there. To this day, I can see that hidden playroom like it was yesterday, and I have no explanation. I really hesitate to call this a skinwalker encounter, but I call it that because I really can't think of another creature that fits the description. So here we go. A while ago, when I was in early high school, I was left alone at home for some reason. I can't remember the reason, but I was left home alone quite a lot after reaching my teenage years. So a little info on my house is that, although I don't live in a rural area, I certainly wouldn't call the area civilized. There are barns within walking distance of my house. I guess the area is developing because there are also subdivisions around. Also, my house has a sliding glass door that leads to a deck in the back. So I was home alone when I heard a knock at the door. It's common for my parents to sometimes leave the house without their house keys. So sometimes I would have to let them in when they got back. My family has a special knock that we use, so whoever's inside knows that it's one of us. This knock didn't sound like one of my family, so I just ignored it because I didn't want to deal with some stranger at the door. Whoever it was knocked again in a more familiar pattern, so reluctantly, I went to the door. When I got there, I didn't notice anyone out front. 
I figured that whoever it was just left because I took my sweet time getting to the door. Then I guess I heard a sound or something coming from the back sliding glass door. Another thing members of my family do is that if nobody answers the door, they'll try to find another way in, such as the back door. So I went to the back door and didn't notice anyone out there either. I slightly opened the sliding door and I heard a voice. It sounded like my mother, but it was coming from underneath the deck. The only reason I say that is because I definitely heard that voice, but my mother wasn't in view of me. Under the deck is the only place she could have been. I can't remember exactly what the voice said, but it was something like, open the door, and it said my name. Now I'm a super paranoid guy, and I know that my mom wouldn't be hiding if she wanted to come inside. So I shut the door, pulled the blinds over, and went to my room. Hours later, and my mom actually shows up, and I tell her what happened. She confirmed that she was not at the house earlier and did not try to get me to open the door. So for years, I didn't really know what to make of this experience. It was a very minor thing, but it spooked the heck out of me. I say it was probably a skinwalker because I don't know any other paranormal entities that would mimic a person's voice to try to lure you outside your house. But what do you think? I want to start this off by saying that I live in my mom's basement. Many people have said that they think it's haunted. Weird things have happened, like the washer turning on by itself, and sometimes even clothes appearing folded when they hadn't been folded previously. That's in the back room, though there's a larger main part that I live in. My bed and TV are set up where our pool table used to be placed when I was younger. In the middle of the night, when everyone else in the house was asleep, I used to hear people playing pool. So that area is no stranger to spirits. When I first moved down there around two months ago, I woke up to a dark figure standing a few feet away from me. It didn't seem threatening. It was just a little weird. I've also had other paranormal experiences. I don't know if they're related to the entities in the basement or what, but I guess I'll share them here too. For instance, yesterday, my YouTube showed numerous profile pictures that weren't mine, but only on my Apple TV and only on the top corner icon when I would click on the profile. It would show my normal one, which is just the standard issued one. But then on the Apple TV, all these other ones appeared. I just stared at it for a minute, confused, then got up to look at the picture and it had something to do with God. I couldn't really read it because of how small the icon was, but it seemed to be some type of Bible verse. Then before my eyes, the profile picture changed again to what looked like a picture of Jesus. So seeing this, I ran to my computer figuring somebody was on my account and I should probably change my password. But that's when I discovered that the icon on my account there was totally normal. No one knew had logged into my account and there were only three devices on that account, my computer, my Apple TV, and my Xbox. So I once again looked back at the TV and the icon was now different. This time I could actually read it. It said, the power of Christ compels you. This slightly shook me to my core, and I ran back to my computer to change my password. Eventually, the profile icon went back to normal on its own a few hours later, which was also somehow slightly alarming. Like I said, I don't know if this has anything to do with what's going on in the basement, but my TV's in the basement, so maybe. I hope this made sense. I don't know if anything like this has happened to anyone else, but please let me know if it has. My grandma, or nanny as we called her, 
spent her last days in a hospital with my mom, dad, sister, sometimes me and others by her side. We were all very close to her, even though she lived alone. She was very tidy, and her house was pretty immaculate. My parents' house, where I lived at the time, was often messy, but on the rare occasion she would visit, I think maybe a period of a decade may have passed between visits, the house would need tidying in advance. But we had one or two rooms in this big house where clothes and odds and ends would pile up, and so naturally, we'd keep this room shut when she visited, if she visited, which was super rare. And so, when she became less capable of living alone due to a medical condition, she moved in and lived with us for a few weeks before going to the hospital where she passed away. During my grandma's stay at our house, she would sometimes tour the house unaccompanied, and on one of those occasions she ventured into a junk room. She didn't say anything to anyone, but I heard her talking to herself in a displeased manner when I caught her wandering in there. This room, by the way, was the room next to my room. I'm, time-wise, aiming to be as accurate as I can, because I'm not 100% sure exactly, but this was either the night of her passing or the following night. I'm asleep, and I wake up around the witching hour. My eyes are open, but I don't move or need to go to the bathroom or anything. My eyes are just open. That's strange, because this kind of unjustifiable awakening never happens. I'm a really light sleeper, too, and I almost always know what wakes me up. Well, as I lay there for a moment, I hear something from the room next door to mine. A noise at the time I couldn't care to catch. I thought literally nothing of it, and closed my eyes to go back to sleep. When I hear again, nearly immediately, the same sort of noise. It was a shuffling sound. I closed my eyes, and this happens a third time. Now I am awake awake. No one else but my sleeping parents are in the house. I keep listening. The noise sounded as though old magazines and odds and ends were either being thrown around or tidied, maybe even knocked over at times, I don't know. It was that third time that got my attention and made me think of her and her connection to it. She was always wanting that place to be tidied. So, maybe she finally had an opportunity to do it. For me, to go anywhere else in the house meant I had to walk past that room, as my bedroom was at the end of the corridor, and I always think of her when I do. A few friends of mine were into exploring abandoned places and checking locations out. Whether it's a rundown shack in the middle of nowhere or an abandoned building, we were always eager to take a look around. To be clear, we don't vandalize or destroy property, we just go take a look. One day, I find out that one of the cemeteries in my area is apparently haunted. It borders on an old abandoned mental hospital and the cemetery was the burial ground for some of the unfortunates who died at that place. The asylum is 150 years old, and it was a horrible place for those who were housed there. All up, there were four of us. After 20 minutes of driving, we get out and search for this cemetery. After about 10 to 15 minutes of looking on maps and walking up and down the neighborhood, we finally came across the cemetery's entrance. It was around 11 p.m. when we got to the cemetery. It was very quiet, barely any cars on the street, and all I could hear was the distant dogs yapping about. All four of us start heading into the cemetery. We're taking this slow and using our eyes and ears to catch anything suspicious. As we're walking, I hear a faint laugh coming from the trees below. It sounded like a child. I first wrote it off as a dog barking in the distance, or just something explainable. As we continue down the track farther, I hear the child laughter again. I turn to my friend, who turns to me, and we both just stare at each other. We both heard the same thing coming from the woods below, and were just spooked. But that didn't stop us. We pushed on, 
going farther into the cemetery and toward the trees. We eventually ended up getting too scared and decided to turn around and walk back. I was positioned with another friend of mine, about two meters behind my other buddies. All of a sudden, I can hear heavy footsteps walking toward us to our right. I'm not kidding when I say this. These footsteps just started picking up pace and we could hear these loud thumping steps just galloping at us. We panicked like crazy because we were looking directly toward this sound and nobody was there. It was too loud to be some kind of critter and it definitely wasn't another person. I'm older now and I no longer explore urban places or abandoned places. It's too risky and I don't wanna get fined, but I still can't find a logical explanation for whatever it was that we experienced that night. I've always been so fascinated with the paranormal, but I had never had any experiences. I'm from the Midwest, and one of the only things to do there is just to drive around and see the countryside. My friends and I did this aimlessly, and we had an obsession with cemeteries. We went to every cemetery we came across, and we found some absolute gems. One on a hill in a grassy field, where the stones are not even visible aside from brushing the grass apart beneath your feet. Another back in the woods with no markers across an old bridge. Just all kinds of spooky and quirky cemeteries. We had looked up local area haunted locations before, but no major sites that we could stomp around at, and we never experienced anything. We later go to college, and we still see each other on the weekends every other week or so. We always wanted to find one specific cemetery that was known to be haunted, but the location was kept a secret. My buddy's friends at college actually found it and went, and it turns out that they have to list the cemetery in county directories. That's how he found it. Anyway, he tells us that he can take us there, so we go. We went at sunset and tried asking questions and recording and so on. This goes on for some time into the night. We take it very unseriously, but we still wanted to encounter something. One of my friends puts his cigarette out on a tombstone to elicit a response. Yes, it was stupid and wildly disrespectful, and we were childish. We asked another question and waited. It was dead silent, and then we hear the leaves crunching, step by step, from the darkness toward us. It sounds like somebody stops right in front of us, but we see nothing. We wait there, silently frozen. And then we heard the most blood curdling scream I have ever heard. We were in a bit of shock. The whole event still seems like I made it up in my mind when I reflect back on it because it was so otherworldly. We slowly began walking and then eventually running as fast as we could toward the car, without a word between us. I still wonder if what we heard was a big cat or something, but where I live, those are pretty much unheard of. I have never heard anything like that scream to this day. We all still remember it, so I know I didn't make it up, and it gives me chills just thinking about it. So the area that my grandparents lived in was somewhat known for Bigfoot sightings, and my grandfather had seen some signs of it too, a set of footprints in the snow that strode uninterrupted over a four-foot fence, calls from the forest, etc. They live at the edge of a state park in Ohio. I've seen plenty at this point, but back then I hadn't had any experience with the paranormal, at least as far as I knew. 
Bigfoot fascinated me because of all the cryptids it seemed the most plausible, and I'd spend some of my week there watching documentaries and discussing it with him. Now he wasn't much of a prankster, but it had happened enough that when something actually did happen, I just thought it was him. I had just gotten into bed at the end of their trailer. I was there for maybe 20 minutes, insomnia, when I heard this call outside the window, passing by quickly down the hill. Imagine an orangutan hoot, not a loud one, just that idle huffing that they kind of do to each other. Pitch that down a ways and then have it coming from lungs that should belong to a bear or a moose. As I said, my first thought was to rationalize that maybe it's grandpa messing with me. He almost had me too. This thought lasted until I remembered the way that the trailer sits on the hill. The bottom of these big windows is sitting six feet off the ground. The noise had definitely come from above me in bed near the tops of the window. So whatever made that noise was two or three feet higher, and the old guy didn't own any stilts. I wish I'd gone to look, but the realization that something that massive had decided to make a noise right next to me just struck me with paralyzing fear. I was playing around an abandoned area within sight of the trailer later that same week, jumping around, rotting beams, and poking through whatever was left, when I just stopped. There was a massive, eminent presence behind me all of a sudden. No noise alerted me. I hadn't seen anything move. It was just... pressure. Nothing inherently threatening in it. Just the sheer weight of the gaze is what got me running. I have felt the presence of ghosts, at least one demon. What I'm pretty sure was eldritch shenanigans, and let me tell you, nothing has ever had the weight of that. The power, it felt more real and present than I think people can be. Anybody else have something like this happen? Not a sighting, but just a sense of something? An impossible noise or an encounter that was just too close? Let me know. I live in a three-story, four-bedroom new house. Prior to it being a house, this plot of land was a residential home, and before that, I have no idea. My partner, our young children, and I have lived here since it was built, nearly six years ago. I've never felt anything bad or good in this house, except for the bedroom on the top floor. That bedroom was our youngest child's bedroom. It was her bedroom from about six months old until about two years. She never slept well, ever. She would always wake up during the night, sometimes crying uncontrollably. We just put it down to her being a crappy sleeper. However, sometimes if we couldn't settle her back down, we would bring her into our room, which was directly next to her room. She would just sit and stare into the hallway outside and would refuse to be put down near the doorway. And if we tried to carry her out into the hallway to show her nothing was there, she would freak out. She no longer has that room as her bedroom. She shares with her older sisters now. The middle child, a boy, now has that bedroom, and he claims to feel fine in there. However, when it was our youngest daughter's bedroom, she would wake in the night, and my partner would go downstairs to make her a bottle, and I would go in to comfort her. While comforting her with my back to the door, I would always feel like there was something or someone watching me, so much so that I would feel forced to glance back over my shoulder. That's the backstory. During a conversation we were having as a family tonight, myself and my partner were talking to the eldest child, 15 years old, and she just so happened to sleep in her brother's room last night. He was at a sleepover at a friend's house, and she wanted to escape the two younger ones. We asked her how she slept. Totally normal question, and we certainly didn't lead her answer in any way. She said, eh, not so great. I felt on edge, like somebody was watching me from the doorway. I wasn't scared, I just felt anxious. How she described her feelings was exactly how I had felt in the past, when I would often be in there comforting our youngest. 
Neither my partner nor myself have ever spoken to the children about this before, so there's no way she was just regurgitating what we've said. I felt a shiver go up my spine when my stepdaughter said this tonight because it was so accurate. My partner immediately looked at me as if to say, wow, that's exactly what we've said. A friend recommended we invest in some selenite to place in and around the room, and we might do that. But I just wanted to share this story and see if anybody else can relate. So the other night, my boyfriend, daughter, who's three and a half, and I were walking in the cemetery a few blocks from our house. We drove because we wanted maximum walking time with the toddler. We planned to play Pokemon Go. We entered through the main entrance, and after a few steps, I started feeling nauseous and worried, anxious. I didn't know why, so I just ignored it. We wanted to check out the huge headstones toward the middle, so we headed that way. We noticed a car, parked, with its lights off, no front license plate, passenger and back doors wide open, and the man is halfway in the back seat. He's parked on one side of the big headstones, which ended up being priests. We walked through and the guy noticed us. He closed the doors that were open, then went around to the driver's side and got in the car. He sat there and just watched us. So we veered away from him and went down a different path. My daughter all of a sudden says, they're so loud. I said, who? My daughter goes, the rocks, they're talking to me. My mouth drops open. We didn't tell her anything about the cemetery or headstones or what the place even is. She has no idea what they are other than big rocks. We ended up leaving, and as soon as we drove away, my nausea eased up. I told my boyfriend about feeling sick, and he freaked out and explained EMF to me. Creepy. We went to the store and passed the cemetery on the way home again. The man's car was still there. He left after we pulled down the street that we lived on. We've had one other paranormal experience with her before. This was the second time that the afterlife, ghosts, spirits, something, showed up to say that it exists, and it's confirmed for me. Later that night, she started talking about the rocks again and said that they were watching us. I asked her what they looked like, and she said, shadows. She said they looked like this, and then proceeded to make a worried expression. She told me that they couldn't walk with us and that they had to stay by the rocks. I don't know if the spirits were warning us about that man, or maybe there's just something not so good at that cemetery. But either way, it was a really interesting experience. This happened to me a few months ago. My two friends and I decided to take a trip to Los Angeles for fun. Keep in mind that we are from the East Coast and we don't know anybody in LA. On the last day of our vacation, we had to check out of the hotel by 11 a.m. The night before, we had gotten back to the hotel really late, so we ended up sleeping in. We knew that it would be difficult to get completely packed up and ready to leave by 11, so we decided to go to the front desk and request a late checkout of noon. We had done this at another hotel before with no issues, and this place wasn't really at capacity with guests, so we figured it was a reasonable request. I drew the short straw and was tasked with going down to the front desk. The elevator in this hotel was really old and quite small, and I found it to be very creepy. I also have mild claustrophobia. 
So I avoided the elevator and walked down the three flights of stairs instead. I asked the receptionist if we could have a late checkout and gave her the room number. She looked at me surprised and said, Yes, we approved your late checkout already, a few minutes ago. I was very confused and I asked her to elaborate. Apparently a girl had come down a minute or two before me to ask for a late checkout for our room number and then had walked out of the building. At this point, I figured that maybe one of my friends had, for whatever reason, decided to take the elevator down and ask before I did. I grumbled a bit at this because I had just walked down those stairs for no reason at all, and it didn't make any sense why they would ask me to go and then beat me to it. But I got back to the room, and to my surprise, both of my friends were there. One of them was taking a shower and the other one was packing. It didn't look like either of them had left the room. So I was kind of like, all right, which one of you's the prankster? They were pretty confused and asked me to explain. So I told them what the receptionist had said and they were shocked. Neither of them had left the room and it seemed too big of a coincidence that somebody would have the same request as us at the same time and just make the mistake of giving our room number. I have no idea who that girl was that made the request. They started joking that maybe it was me from another dimension or something. But yeah, whatever it was, the whole thing was kind of eerie. I believe that I have seen gnomes on more than one account. It's been well over a year since I last saw a gnome. I have epilepsy, so I'm never entirely sure if it's just my brain fabricating things, but I have also never hallucinated due to seizures that I know of. That all being said, I once went to a psychic who did Akashic record readings. She told me that I was closely connected to earth spirits. I made no mention to her about seeing gnomes because, well, that makes you sound absolutely bonkers. For a short period of time, my ex and I lived in his belated grandfather's house. The property was teeming with Japanese maples and native plants. He also kept an orchid room. One day, while taking a shower, I heard the bathroom door move and I saw a drably dressed little old man about a foot and a half tall run through the bathroom and climb out the open window. It scared the absolute crap out of me. I let out a yelp. My ex came running in, and so as not to be taken for even more medical testing than I've already been through, when he asked me what happened, I told him that I had just slipped. Another thing I once saw might have been a troll, but I'm unsure. I have no idea what it was. Maybe one of you could enlighten me. I'd been doing a lot of meditating, about three hours or so, and I headed into my bedroom to change for the gym. I opened my closet, and there was a three and a half to four foot naked, wrinkly, elf troll type thing. I gasped and backed up, and it disappeared. Since both sightings mentioned here, I have had more than one CT scan, MRIs, etc. My seizures were a result of head trauma that happened well after what I'll refer to as the troll incident. There are other times that I've seen them, as well as one childhood encounter with my belated Noni, and a few encounters with my grandfather who died when I was four. Again, my brain has been scanned a lot in multiple ways, and nothing abnormal has ever been found, other than some white spots from chronic migraine, and those popped up super recently. I have even been evaluated by a neuropsychologist. No one has ever diagnosed me with anything other than seizures related to the head trauma, but like I said, that happened after I started seeing these things. I'm not really sure what it is I'm seeing, I just thought it was interesting.
Tonight, August 4th of 2019, at around 10.15, my aunt and I were on the porch when my aunt saw something in the sky. It was like an outline of a circle, and part of it was gone, kind of like how an eclipsed moon would look at first. We noted that this was not where the moon usually is. Usually it's behind our house. So eclipse and moon were ruled out. The thing was bright yellow and had an orange-red tint to it. It almost looked like a fireball. It's night, and the sun is on the other side of the planet at this minute, so wasn't that either. We thought it was a shooting star at first, but it wasn't moving anywhere. It started, like, flattening out, like spreading. Then it started to shrink into a smaller form. and kind of looked like a star. Then all of a sudden, it disappeared. A few minutes later, it suddenly reappeared and got bigger and bigger. It looked as if the moon would have been over the sun and coming off of it, moving toward the way it came in the first time. The light around it kind of spread out again. Then suddenly, it started getting smaller, like the dark part of the eclipse was going back over. Then it split into two and completely disappeared. We waited to see if it would come back, but it didn't come back for the third time. I started doing some research and found nothing for solar or lunar eclipses that described what we saw. No meteor showers, no eclipses even happened in our area, no comets, nothing of the sort for that night. After doing some more searching, two other people saw almost the same thing three days ago around the same time. My aunt stepped back outside and called me over fast. There was what looked to be a pretty low plane flying with two large wings. My aunt says it looked like it had four wings, two on either side, and I'm telling you this thing was big. One side was bright red and the other was bright green. Planes in our area normally have a small light that flickers on both sides. It wasn't like this at all. This plane was coming from the same area that we had seen these mystery light things in. And when the plane got behind our house, I ran to look at it, and I couldn't see it at all. It was big, like I said. It shouldn't have been out of view already. My aunt and I have been trying to come up with a logical explanation, but nothing makes any sense. I don't want to claim aliens, but I don't know what else it could have been. Back in 2013, when I was 18 and living in a suburb of South Florida, something inexplicable began to happen. As I was preparing to move up north to attend the University of Florida in Gainesville, I noticed a strange pattern. On the first Sunday of every month, without exception, I found myself unable to sleep. I would toss and turn all night, plagued by this feeling of dread. Sometimes, these sleepless nights would be followed by odd discoveries on my body. For instance, I once woke up to find a large red bump on my lower spine, right on my spinal cord. It wasn't itchy like a bug bite, and it wasn't like a pimple either. Another time, I found a cauterized looking brown scar across my lower abdomen, only for it to disappear in a day or two, like a scratch might have. One particular Sunday stands out in my memory. My boyfriend was spending the night, and though my parents insisted that he sleep in a separate room, we spent some time talking in my bed before parting for the night. As he was speaking, he suddenly fell silent and looked behind him, his eyes wide with fear. When I asked what was wrong, he shrugged it off, but his expression stayed in my head. Something was definitely wrong but he just wouldn't tell me. That night, the dread was more intense than usual. I was restless, and I finally sought comfort by joining my boyfriend in his room, but I still couldn't sleep. After nearly dozing off and then awakening in a fright, I returned to my room and eventually fell into a troubled sleep. The next morning, my boyfriend shared something that startled me. 
He revealed that when he had suddenly stopped speaking the night before, he had felt a presence outside my window. Aliens were the first thought that came to his mind, although he didn't know why. It froze him in terror. He also described hearing a loud static noise and feeling vibrations in the air shortly after I had gone back to my room. A few months later, the monthly sleepless nights ceased, never to return. To this day, I wonder about all of those occurrences. Were they merely coincidences or something more? My boyfriend and I were both on edge that night, feeling something that we couldn't explain. The strange physical marks, the sleepless nights, the fear that seemed to be over nothing. They all remain an unsolved mystery, a baffling chapter in my life that continues to interest but also unsettle me. I live on a 20-acre horse ranch in the panhandle of Florida, about a half hour from the Alabama border. And 15 minutes ago, I heard the strangest animal sound I've ever heard, if it was an animal. It happened almost right outside the property, which is only about 50 feet away from where I am now. It was a very loud whistle. I heard it four times, spaced out by like 15 to 30 seconds, and each whistle was different, no repeating tunes or notes. It was loud enough to sound like it was echoing across the property. After the four independent whistled tunes, it was followed by a sound that almost sounded like a frustrated sigh. Then nothing. Then the whole thing would start all over again. I sat there listening to this, like somebody was just facing the property outside the fence line, whistling four different tunes, huffing in frustration, and then doing it again. What's even stranger is that it was dead quiet while this was happening. Shortly after the silence, I could hear a pack of coyotes in the distance, which happens all the time. The owls over the lake, which is also frequent. But while this was happening, I didn't hear any of that. Also, to be clear, where the sound was coming from is an open field. It's so dark I can't see my hand in front of my face when I go out there. The weirdest thing is, we're more likely to hear gunshots than other people out here. The closest neighbors are like a half mile away in the other direction. This sound came from the road side of the property. The closest neighbors in that direction are over a mile away. We also have two donkeys on the property to ward off predators, and I didn't hear either of them warning the herd, which would mean that maybe it was a human I was hearing. But like I said, the property is fenced and gated, so they would have had to hop the fence. And whistling is a really weird thing to do when you're trespassing in an area where shooting is common. Update. It's now 30 minutes after the initial thing happened. I hear the horses running fast away from where the sound originated. Then, about a minute later, I hear their hooves heading back to where the sound originated. This happened several times. I am really confused. My husband at the time and I had been married about a year when one of his friends told us that they were buying a house. Their rental house would be available and the rent was very reasonable. His wife's parents knew the owner of the house and he was fine with us moving in. We said yes, since we were happy to leave our small apartment. My husband told me that the house was pretty nice. He and his friend's band practiced there all the time. Weird stuff started happening right away. I worked and went to school during the day, 
while my husband was a working musician, so he was gone until very late. I woke up in bed one night, and I heard the front screen door spring squeak open. Oh, my husband's home, I thought. He put the key in the lock, opened the door, and quietly let the screen door shut. I was still in bed as I heard him walking across the living room, so I called out hello to him and told him he doesn't need to be quiet because I'm awake. He didn't answer, so I called out again. The house was quiet. I looked at my cat, who was in bed with me, and she was on high alert, sitting straight up, eyes wide, staring at the bedroom door. I don't know how long we hid out in the bedroom, but some time later the screen opened again, and it was all louder. The door unlocked, and it was my husband this time. These events happened quite a few times, but sometimes it was just footsteps. There were often crashing sounds in the house, like a broom handle hitting the floor. Cabinet doors would be opened, and small appliances would be turned on for no good reason. We started unplugging everything when we weren't using it to avoid this. Guests, and later roommates, also experienced the same things. The house had a reputation with the neighbors, who called it Tragedy House. Once I was sitting at the table in the kitchen, and a tall black thing flew from the wall behind me on my left, through the kitchen, and out the outside wall. It happened in just a second, but I remember thinking it had to hit that wall. But it didn't, it just went straight through it. The house's owner, our landlord, told me that his wife had died while they were on vacation years earlier. She fell down some stairs, leaving him with three small children. He said that she loved this house. He would always say, I can still feel her here when I come in. You and me both, buddy. You and me both. I'm going to preface this by saying that it isn't my story, but something that happened to my parents. They live in western New York, upstate, and they're very open to all kinds of supernatural stuff. My dad has reason to believe in aliens, for reasons other than this encounter. That's a story for another day, though. It might be a good time to add that my parents do not use substances or alcohol, and they're very sharp as far as memory, cognizance, and intuition goes. I'm just going to copy and paste the text message that my mom sent me about this experience. I thought somebody would find it interesting, or maybe even have an explanation for them. This is what my mom had to say. Last weekend, we were coming back from Jamestown. Dad and I saw a UFO, or something. Between Randolph and Steenberg, there was a huge, very bright light, blinking off and on in the sky directly in front of us, and it was falling from the sky except that it was shooting directly downward. I thought it was a falling star at first, but after it blinked repeatedly, I thought, that's not a falling star. I even thought it might be a plane, but it was too bright, and too fast, and it was plummeting downward with intention. Then, all of a sudden, mid-sky, it was just gone. I thought, well, it must have gone behind a hill or a mountain or the trees. Right then, I said, did you see that? And at the same time, Dad said, what the heck was that? He said that he was thinking the same thing I was. And at the same time, we both noticed out loud, there are no mountains. And there weren't. No mountains, no hills, no trees. It was just cornfields and open space, and this thing just blinked out of existence. The next thing you know, it was directly behind us, mid-sky, and it shot directly upward, back into the sky. I was looking out of my rear view, and it lit up the whole sky, like an aura all around, but the brightness of it was still really bright white. 
Dad turned around watching it, and it started to follow us. We had that same eerie feeling that we did when we saw that thing that we thought was Bigfoot. All we kept saying was, what the heck is that? All of a sudden, it just disappeared. Isn't that weird? This is a description of events that happened to me during my time as a security guard at a local factory. Obviously, I can't give any locations or names, but I will say that it happened in Germany. I have been working at this place for about two years. It's an old chemical factory that was built in the early 1900s before World War I. I don't know much more about its history other than that, though. For the first few months, all went pretty smoothly, but after a while, I started noticing some things that were quite odd. The first thing I noticed on my nightly rounds was that in some buildings, the lights seemed to turn on or off on their own. But I wrote that off as the old electrical installations, which could act quirky sometimes, or employees forgetting to turn the light off. Employees could act quirky too. The thing is, that stuff kept happening, even when there was nobody else but me on the premises. I could check a building at the start of my round, only to return 30 minutes later, to find every light in the building turned on, but the doors still locked. There was one particular building that constantly gave me the creeps. A flat, one-story building that was basically one long hallway with office rooms on either side. Every time I walked through that hallway to check if all the offices were locked, I felt like somebody was just behind me, looking over my shoulder. It was also in this building that I heard whispers or sighs from one of the offices, but they were always empty, and all of the electronic equipment that could have caused those noises were turned off or in some cases unplugged. Another building that I had weird stuff happen in was the metal workshop. The weirdest thing was that one night I heard a noise from within. And when I entered, all of the machines, the drills, the saws, everything were on and running. I just ran in, hit the main emergency switch and got out of there. That night, again, I was the only one there. I tried to talk with some of my colleagues about it, but they said that if I wanted to keep my job, I'd better stop talking about these things, as management didn't take too kindly to people asking questions. So, I haven't asked any more questions, but I definitely have some. I live outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we went on a family vacation to Hershey, Pennsylvania, which was roughly 200 miles away, taking just under a three and a half hour trip. One morning, while I was at the hotel, I decided to take a shower. As usual, I took off my wedding ring and left it on the counter next to the sink. However, this time, in my rush and excitement to get going, I forgot to put it back on after finishing up. It wasn't until I got in the car that I realized I wasn't wearing it. I quickly ran back inside the hotel room and searched every inch of the bathroom, my suitcase, and turned every article of clothing I had worn that week inside out. But the ring was nowhere to be found. Feeling a bit desperate, I decided to leave a description of the ring at the front desk, hoping that the cleaning crew might find it. I tried to reassure them that it really wasn't worth stealing, it was just a simple 14 karat white gold ring with no engravings or anything like that. In fact, I even joked that it might be mistaken for a washer or a nut, understanding if they ended up throwing it out. 
Despite my best efforts and one last deep dive into everything in that room that night, I had almost given up hope of finding the ring. My wife wasn't too upset, considering I had recently lost some weight, causing the ring to constantly slide off my finger. I had experienced miraculous recoveries of the ring in the past, like finding it while cutting the grass or shoveling snow, even in public pools and bars, places where it should have been lost forever. So she had suggested that I get it resized anyway, but eventually we decided to just replace it entirely. Fast forward three years and I was doing some spring cleaning in my house. At one point, I took all the cushions off the couch and flipped it upside down to get rid of the crumbs left by my kids. When I picked up the couch again, to my astonishment, there sat my old wedding ring right in the middle of the floor. I verified that it was indeed the same ring I had lost years ago, now too big for my finger. Strangely, it looked exactly like the new one that I had bought from the same jeweler, who still had my records and matched it perfectly in a smaller size. The most puzzling part was how, after three years, the ring had seemingly teleported from that hotel to my couch, a couch that I had thoroughly cleaned several times during that time span. I still don't know how it got back to me, but it has become a cherished keepsake with a cool story to go along with it. Most people would be thrilled to move out of a haunted house, but for Reddit user Kate the Girl Who Dreams, moving out of her haunted house was different. Here's her story. So my boyfriend and I had been living in this house for a few years. He had gone overseas for a little while and then returned. A few months later, and we started to pack our bags for the move into a new place. When we finished packing up the boxes and clothes, my boyfriend did something I didn't expect him to do. He put his hands together and thanked the ghosts for helping us and then said his goodbyes before leaving the room. He said he felt sad, and it would have been a lie if I had said I didn't feel the same way. For years, activity in that house had rather frightened him. It upset him as well, and a few times it was so bad that he cursed at them within the room as activity occurred, which is why his last action in that room surprised me. I felt that they had been heavily misunderstood, the spirits or whatever. Throughout the years, they had told me a lot about themselves. I had gathered a lot of EVPs and photos from the house. It was a love-hate relationship with them. At times, they would warn me of somebody around me. I don't really know if it was because I was the only tenant who was constantly there and who actually spoke to and got anything on them. One time, I was at work, and a customer said that he saw something like a little boy next to me. I started to recall the little boy entity who was in the house I lived in. I did a spirit box session later, and I asked if one of them had followed me to work. The little boy's voice actually responded and said, Yes, only me. I get that it was scary for some, but moving away from the haunted house was also something that felt rather saddening and freeing at the same time. It's nice in the new place, the first day and nothing paranormal had happened, a rather quiet night of sleep. It feels nice, and yet strange at the same time. Oddly lonely, but it's something my boyfriend and I will get used to. The only thing is, my boyfriend brought a piece of jewelry that one of the entities really liked with us, so we'll see how that turns out. But for now, it's quiet and peaceful bittersweet, but still a nice change from everything that was going on before. Time for newer and better things. A change of scenery. Mm -hmm. 
One of my friends died almost a year ago to the day, so this has been on my mind a lot lately. I flew out for her funeral and met up with a group of friends. Together, we drove to the town where she was to be interred. Because we're all poor college graduates, we took the cheap route and shared a hotel room. The ride over was honestly kind of terrifying. Toward the latter part of the trip, conveniently after nightfall, we ended up driving through unfamiliar rural roads that were entirely devoid of other traffic. At one point, we were super lost and caught in a really thick fog, something completely uncharacteristic of the area. My friends joked that it was her ghost just messing with us. When we finally reached the hotel, it was about 11 and we were exhausted. We were all standing around in the lobby waiting to get checked in and it was a bit of a process. And that's when I saw my dead friend in the mirror. She didn't look scary or dead or anything and she wasn't even looking at me. That's why I didn't immediately parse that it was weird. I looked at her for a second or two and looked back down. When I fully registered what I had seen, I looked back up, but of course, she was gone. Empty space where she had been and all of that. Telling the story now, it seems so cliche. She looked so normal looking though. She wasn't doing any type of scary dead ghost thing. She was just chilling there in the lobby like the rest of us, kind of bored, looking toward the concierge desk. She was wearing this leather jacket she had that fit her really well. Her eye makeup was like it always was. I mean, she looked great. I remember she was wearing these tiny gold filigree earrings that I had gotten her for Christmas. I didn't tell anybody I was with what I had seen because I didn't want to upset them. I still haven't told them. I don't think she was appearing to me or anything. Like, we were friends, but I definitely wasn't the closest person to her of everybody who was there at the time. I know it's likely that I was just tired and that she was on my mind and that I imagined it. But I do want to believe that it was true. It was really comforting to see her there. She didn't die suddenly. We all knew that it was going to happen for quite some time. One of her fears was that we would all forget about her when she passed. I chose to believe that she was just following us to make sure we made it to her funeral. Now that I've told the story, I feel kind of stupid, I guess. I just wanted to tell somebody. So back in June of 2021, I had moved, and while I was driving, we went through Wisconsin. I can't really remember the town or anything, so I'm sorry about that, but it was around two to three in the morning. We had stopped to try to get gas, but when we got into one town, it was like a ghost town. There were no cars or anything. And while yes, it was pretty early, Keep in mind that we had seen cars all the way up until this point, at least sporadically. Regardless, we noticed a gas station that was all lit up. All the lights were on inside, and an open light was glowing and everything. Yet when we got closer and tried to go in the doors, they were locked. We even went around the back, looking for a car, but nothing. Not to mention, Every single gas pump set out of order. We got back in the car, not really thinking anything of it. Until we found another gas station, maybe a block away. And I'm not even kidding when I say the exact same thing happened. By now I was a bit put off, but I wasn't about to convince myself that we had entered some weird wormhole. Until it happened a third time. At this point, I didn't even want to get out of the car, but I needed to stretch my legs. When I did though, my friend who was driving went to try the doors. Nothing. When he was on his way back to the car, there was a blood curdling scream. It genuinely made me sick to my stomach. My reaction was visceral. And keep in mind, it was so quiet up until this point. 
but we made our way out of there as fast as we could. And we didn't see any cars again until we got back on a main highway. After that, and after getting settled into my apartment, my roommates and I just didn't feel well. When I was unpacking with one of them, something fell twice, and we still don't know how it did. A few days later, my other roommate said that she felt like there was something in the apartment. I felt it too, but I'm kind of a paranoid person by default, so I had always assumed it was just me. She is not though, so this validated to me that some kind of presence was there. I don't know what to call this. It was just a really weird experience and a story that I wanted to share. Skinwalker Screams A few years ago, I was taking part in a church camp. We were sleeping in tents on a wide area that was surrounded by a deep forest. The next village was far away, and it was dark as heck at night without any city lights shining in the distance. It always had a kind of eerie feeling, but I didn't think much of it, until this happened. The restrooms of our camp were pretty far from our tents, on the exact opposite of the campsite. So if I needed to go to the bathroom at night, I would have to grab a flashlight, get out of my tent, and walk across the whole area of grass and dirt. One night I needed to pee, so I shook a friend of mine awake and asked if she could go with me to the bathroom. I was really afraid as we both got out of the tent and started walking. It was deadly silent. The only thing we could hear was the sound of the river nearby. We got to the bathroom, and as we left a couple of minutes later, I couldn't get to our tent fast enough. As we were halfway across the land, my heart froze. I could have sworn that it had gotten even more silent out than it was before. That's when we heard it. An absolutely horrible scream, inhuman, filled with dread and sorrow. It didn't sound like some kind of animal. It was so loud that we both jumped a little. It came right out of the dark forest, far away, but so loud that it felt like it was right beside me. It even echoed a couple of times until it vanished. Then the insects began to make noises again. My friend and I were terrified and ran for our lives. I hadn't slept that night, not even a little. I covered my ears like crazy, too afraid of what I might hear if I listened. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like that. The only thing I've ever come across online is skinwalker screams, and they sounded just like that. I've had paranormal experiences before, but since I'm familiar with working with spirits and stuff, those I know how to handle, but this scream sends shivers down my spine to this day, and I still don't have any explanation for it. I never thought that Wendigos were a thing in Germany, but maybe they are? I really don't know. So a little backstory. I went to a special needs school for nine years, one of the Tivin schools in Denmark. The buildings are over 130 years old and they have a lot of history, including being a tuberculosis treatment center. The basement was where all the creative things were, like paint and stone cutter tools, the library and some other things. At the time I was 13 to 14 I'm female, I was also very creative, and I loved to go down there after school because I could just hide in there and be myself and make things. To get there, you'd have to walk through a very loud door, go left just a little bit, 
and then go through another door, a glass door, and then finally the last door. You could always, always hear it when somebody was coming down there because it was just so loud. The person who was supposed to be taking care of me left, and I was alone in the basement in that room. I heard the door and everything, and them walking up the stairs. Then, I heard a whisper. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but it was definitely a woman. The person who was taking care of me was a man, so it wasn't him. I looked to where I had heard the whisper, and this is where I saw a transparent woman in old-fashioned clothing. From what I could tell, it seemed like something was running down her face. When I think about it now, maybe it was blood, but it was pretty dark. We made eye contact. Surprisingly, I wasn't scared. I didn't really think about it. It was normal to see things down there, to hear things. I asked if she was okay, and she screamed in a way that I can't describe. Honestly, it was like a banshee. And then she just disappeared. The weird thing is, my stepdad's father passed away a little over a week later. To this day, I can't be totally sure what I saw down there. I know banshees aren't from Denmark, but that scream. It was odd and different. It wasn't like a normal scream. And them being harbingers of doom and all that, and then something bad happening later. I don't know. I'm 21 now, and I'm still as confused as I was back then. All I know is that that school was definitely haunted, because I'm not the only one who saw some things there. I guess this story is a little boring, but it just happened to me, so here you go. I was rock climbing with two other guys in Colorado and was belaying one of them when the two of us on the ground heard something weird. The commands we use to communicate that we are safe at the top of a route are, name the guy on the ground, off belay, which prompts the belayer to unclip the rope from his belay device so the climber can pull slack out of the rope. The response to that command is, name of the guy at the top of the route, belay off. The climber was approximately 40 meters up on an about 50 meter route. I didn't know this at the time. The rope stopped moving, which isn't uncommon when someone is having a hard time with a move or is setting up an anchor, which is what we thought was going on. But then we heard it. A voice that sounded way closer to the ground like close enough that we could have had a shouting conversation and way farther left off route of where the climber should have been, said, my name, off belay. I looked at the other guy in our climbing party who was just as confused as I was. He said to me, what the F was that? And we discussed where the climber should be at this time and that we shouldn't be able to hear him that well. The rope still wasn't moving but I decided to keep him on belay. I figured it would be best to keep him safe and just feed slack through my belay device in the event that it wasn't him. Turns out it wasn't. A few moments later, the rope starts moving again, later followed by a faint syllable counted, my name off belay, that sounded way more like it should have. We didn't really think anything of it, but we had been traveling down the wall and hit a few routes without seeing anyone. We also had a friend just a few months ago that got burned in on a route when someone took him off belay when he wasn't safe. I remember seeing a video of a hiker or rancher or something walking down the road when he hears the voice of a woman calling him off the road. The guy stops to figure out what's going on, then just gets out of there because of how weird it was. I'm starting to wonder if there is a cryptid that can mimic the voice of a certain person. We're not entirely sure what happened, but we know two things. 
Number one, it's a really good idea that I didn't listen to that first voice. And second, it wasn't a person. About five years ago, my wife and I got into a pretty big argument right after our son was first born. We were all heading to the pharmacy that morning, but both of us, being immature, decided to go separately. I had the day off, so I brought my son with me. It was only about a quarter of a mile up the street from my house, so we planned on walking. Well, I left a little late, and I didn't see my wife in the house prior to me leaving because of us avoiding each other. And when I got about a minute from there, I see my wife turn the corner, so I'm kinda not looking at her. But then when we pass, we both kinda mean mugged each other and didn't say a word. I go in, I get my script, and I get home. Well, she's laying on the couch in her pajamas and not even getting ready for work. So I tapped her and I said, what the heck, you're not getting ready for work. Why did you change out of your clothes? Are you not going to work now? And she was like, what are you talking about? I've been laying here in my pajamas. I'm just gonna go get my script and a few things that I was gonna get later. I was like, you didn't go to the pharmacy earlier? I just walked past you, like 10 to 15 minutes ago when you were leaving. You gave me that evil, dirty look, so I gave you the same one in return. She starts saying that I'm crazy and must have been hallucinating and what did I take? I totally didn't believe her. I thought she was just gaslighting me, trying to make me feel like I was losing my mind. But later that night when we were cooled down, we all went to Walmart together to get her scripts and a few of the things that she needed. I literally felt like I was in the twilight zone. I kept saying like, come on, Jill, quit messing with me. She swore up and down and actually started getting a little irritated that I kept pressing her about it. Ultimately, I believe her that she had never left the house. It was one of the weirdest experiences that I've ever had. After I believed her that it really wasn't her, things started sticking out to me, like the look she gave me and how things about her face just were a little off. Even when she's mad at me, the look that she gives me is never that evil. And that's exactly what this look was, just evil. Like, even at resting neutrality, this face would have been full of evil and hatred. It was just like that. But still, at the time, we locked eyes and I was totally convinced it was my wife. I still have no idea what happened. I worked at a restaurant located in a remote town in Michigan. Do you recall that show Ghost Hunters? Well, they actually investigated our place a few years back. From what I've been told, there are two spirits here, a little girl and a man. On my first day, curious about the ghostly rumors linked to the TV show's visit, I asked a coworker about it. As she was leaving the room, she casually mentioned Oh yeah, there's a little girl ghost here. Just as she said that, something knocked the tool we used to retrieve pizzas from the oven right to the floor. Months later, that same co-worker shared another eerie tale. She claimed the spirit would turn on the radio even when it was unplugged. I was skeptical, until one particular incident. It was a bustling Friday evening with karaoke in full swing, making the restaurant quite noisy. Directly above us is an old condemned apartment, perpetually vacant. Out of nowhere, we heard a series of thunderous steps coming from the ceiling, as if something was charging across that room. Suddenly, an entire stack of full-length hotel pans, each measuring about three feet by one foot and eight inches deep, were violently thrown off the shelf in our kitchen. The resulting clatter was deafening. 
like a cacophony of stainless steel crashing down onto tile floor. These pans, stacked together, must have weighed around 40 pounds. Just moments before this chaos, I had called out to the manager across the room, asking, did you hear that? About the thundering upstairs. I had this gut feeling that it was the ghost. The restaurant was loud, but the noise above was unmistakably distinct. Before he could even nod in acknowledgement, the stack of pans was flung to the floor. The most chilling part? Our 18-year-old dishwasher was directly in front of the shelf and witnessed the pans being hurled. The shock on her face was something I will never forget. In all, four of us heard the phantom footsteps, one saw the pans being thrown by nothing, and several others were startled by the clamor. Given what I've experienced, it's hard for me to remain skeptical. The only other explanation might be a very elaborate prank, but that seems even more far-fetched given the people that I work with. For the first few months after my kids and I moved into our house, the house seemed pretty normal. But then one night, my son came screaming down the stairs in what I would call a night terror. I assume he woke up from a nightmare and it just kept going. He finally took a breath and said, I was sleepwalking, I'm okay, and went back up to his room. Then the weirdness started. One night, I was down in the basement doing laundry, and I heard a small child's voice behind me say, Hi there. When I turned around, no one was there. At that point, we started finding toys in the basement in obscure places. My first thought was that the children who lived there before had hidden them in the crevices in the walls. Then one day, I noticed a box of old marbles appeared where I had just cleaned. None of the toys belonged to my kids. I also set up a cheap dollar store alarm system around the office area so that I knew when the kids would sneak into the office to try to find birthday and Christmas presents. Little stinkers. They did it often. One day when I was in the bathroom, the alarm went off. I yelled from the bathroom, Hey, get out of my office! Since my son and I were the only ones home, I heard him yell from upstairs, I'm not in your office. As time went by, we could hear a piano playing at night that I thought might be the neighbors, and sometimes the lights and ceiling fan would go on and off. I blamed old lighting. The front door would sometimes open if not double locked. I told the woman who owned the home before the new landlords bought it as our kids were friends. She told me the reason why she put the double lock on the door is that somebody would open the door at night, and the reason she finally sold the house was because of all the weirdness surrounding it, including the piano. After that, we started looking for another place to live. It was during this time that really strange stuff started happening. My kids would feel like they were getting pushed up the stairs when going up. And then, one night, while my son was asleep in his room, he heard an old woman's raspy voice whisper from the closet, saying, I'm going to kill you. The kids would see shadows of figures going from our back porch area to a small building that belonged to the old house next door that was supposedly a candy store that burnt up inside years before, but the outside remained undamaged. At this point, we moved. In Ivory Coast, West Africa, my friends and I walked into the biggest hotel and palace in the capital at 3 p.m. And it was completely empty and silent. There were no cars, no taxis outside, no customers, no employees. This hotel is an enormous complex with a mall, dozens of shopping stores, pools, 
tennis courts, restaurants, conference rooms. It's always busy, 24-7. I needed to withdraw money from the ATM, and all the doors were open, so I walked inside. It was the eeriest experience of my entire life. It was like the place had been abandoned. But why the open doors? And everything was okay. It was clean. Just all the people were missing. There were no lights on, just the emergency lights. But since all the doors were open, the natural light was shining through. So at least it wasn't too dark. The only noise came from my steps on the marble, and there wasn't even an echo. My heart was pounding in my chest because the situation just didn't make any sense. At one point, I saw some light on in a store about 50 meters away from me, with people inside, and I breathed a sigh of relief. But once I arrived in front of the store, I noticed that I couldn't really distinguish the shapes or the faces of the people, even though it was clear glass. They were fuzzy, for lack of a better word. Panic started to kick in, but I still needed that money, so I hurried to the ATM that was closest. I was afraid the ATM would be dead, but surprisingly, it was functional. I withdrew the money and ran out of the hotel using the first exit I found. Still, no one in sight. After walking a few meters, I exited on another street, and suddenly everything got noisy again. It was full of people and activity. I came back later to the hotel on another day, and it was totally back to normal. It's been almost 20 years since this happened, but I will never forget this experience. I still think about it from time to time, and every time I return, and I walk past it, it still makes me feel weird. This is a story about my little sister's experiences with the entity that haunted our Florida home. I myself have never experienced anything in that house, but I think you'll find her encounters very creepy. For my sister's privacy, I will refer to her as Liz. This all took place in Florida when I was 15 and Liz was 11. Liz shared a room with me and our youngest sister. She slept on the top bunk while I slept across the room in my own bed. I liked to entertain my sisters by telling scary stories or reciting the whole script to one of our favorite movies. Liz always had a habit of calling me out whenever I told a scary story. She didn't believe in ghosts, which makes this whole thing 10 times weirder. The first incident was probably around July, as I remember it was pretty hot. I had been asleep maybe three hours when I was shaken awake. It was Liz. She asked me why I was standing by her bed and staring at her. Having just been woken up, I was confused. I no longer sleepwalked, so I had no idea why she would think that I was staring at her all creepy-like. I got her back to bed and sat with her until she fell back asleep. The second incident was maybe four weeks later. While eating breakfast, Liz asked Mom who the man in the hat was. Mom brushed her off, but I questioned her further. She told me that late last night, she woke up to find somebody standing next to her bed, peering at her through the safety bars. She described the figure as a man wearing a fedora-type hat and wearing all black. He was very shadowy and disappeared when Liz blinked. The third and most terrifying incident happened a few days after. I remember waking up after a particularly terrifying nightmare. I looked over to my sister's bed, and I noticed that Liz was sitting bolt upright, staring at me. I asked her what was wrong. She answered, with fear apparent in her voice, The man in the hat was watching you sleep. 
that was the last and most terrifying incident I can remember. I don't believe he appeared again. We had our house blessed twice, so that may have deterred him. What do you think it was? I know we don't have any dead relatives that wore hats like that, so I'm very confused as to what she saw. Our next story is about a woman who experienced a wild glitch in the Matrix, and she wasn't the only witness. Here's her story. If you don't believe in magic or the supernatural, just go to Africa. The stuff you see there is going to change the whole trajectory of your life and everything you thought you knew. I was born and raised in Australia, but when I was 15, I moved to Kenya for four years with my siblings. I just recently came back. I'm 19 now. I have a lot of glitch in the Matrix stories in Kenya, but this one is the most interesting to me. My older brother and sister and I decided to go to the grocery store after school because my grandma, who we were staying with, wanted eggs. We found this outside marketplace type thing where all the food is on tables on the side of the street. We were picking some eggs until everyone near me started screaming. I got scared, and I looked where everyone else was looking. They were looking and screaming at an old lady. She was just standing still. She looked so normal. Nothing was creepy or scary about her. There were a lot of Muslims in the area of Kenya that I lived in, and they were all shouting Islamic phrases at her, some reading the Quran. It was such a scene. Then, as I was watching her, she disappeared. I can swear on all the heavens and gods above that I am not lying. This woman disappeared on the spot. Just gone. The moment she vanished, everyone started screaming even more. My brother tells me this is all very normal in Kenya, and people believe that women like her are demons, and that's why they were yelling at her to leave. I don't care what it was, but she vanished on the spot. No walking away, nothing to block my view of her, just vanished. My brother and sister saw, the cashier lady at the food place saw, a lot of people saw this. We ran home and told my grandma, and she goes, oh yeah, that's normal here. What? I said. She said that it was people who use black magic to get around and to never interfere with them. I'll never forget what that woman looked like or how my body reacted when I saw her vanish. But along with my other experiences, I know for a fact that the supernatural, magic, and other things exist in our world. I've lived in the same house for a decade now. The old lady who used to live here died, and her best friend still lives next door. I'm not sure how long she has left, but this house has always been spooky. It's always cold, it's really old, and I have had a lot of weird experiences for years. It's very common for me to hear footsteps, doors opening and closing, and my cat staring at random corners. My front door once opened and slammed closed by itself, and my mother saw an apparition of a Victorian lady in the front hallway in the middle of the night. I was also once home alone showering downstairs, and I heard somebody aggressively pacing back and forth in my room, opening and slamming my drawers closed. After a while, you get used to it, and you just accept the flow of things. For a while, the activity died down, and things seemed less scary. Plus, I moved away for university, so I got a huge break from the spooky stuff. But now I'm back, and the activity has spiked. 
A few nights ago, I was having a particularly hard mental health day. I was up at about 4 a.m., facing the wall, trying to sleep with my back to the door. My radio is always on at a low volume, and the music was playing. But I suddenly hear the voice of a woman behind me, almost groaning. It sounded like she was letting all the air out of her lungs, almost like wheezing. I freaked out, and when I looked, there was no one there. Yesterday, I was FaceTiming my boyfriend, and I heard footsteps in my house again, which I haven't heard in months. Distinct paces up the stairs, shuffling on the floorboards. I was genuinely scared, and even thought it was an actual intruder. But nobody was there. I'm scared that perhaps I'm manifesting something. I've never heard a woman before in this house, and the wheezing was so clear. I don't want to sound dramatic, but I'm scared of losing my sanity. And maybe I am. But my house has always been spooky, and this sudden spike has no real explanation. I'm going to try to smudge the house with some herbs that I gathered to feel a little bit safer. Hopefully, it works. A few years ago, when my daughter was three, I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. My husband and I were in no way trying for a baby whatsoever. I was on birth control and we were very careful. I walk into her preschool one day to find the director and her teachers telling me congratulations with big smiles on their faces. I used to work as a preschool teacher there, so a lot of these people were close friends of mine. I ask them what they're congratulating me for, and they tell me that my daughter announced to everybody that mommy has a little sister in her tummy. I laughed it off and I told them all that I was sorry to disappoint them, but this just wasn't true. My daughter and I went home and talked about it. I told her mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy, and she just kept pointing at my belly and saying, yes, you do. She was very upset, as though I were lying to her. A few days later, I wake up to somebody touching my belly. My daughter has the bottom of my shirt pulled up with her head resting on my belly while she rubs it gently and says, baby sister, what are you doing hiding in there? It was really sweet and I just assumed that she really wanted a little sister. She had never expressed any interest in having a sibling prior to this and we had never discussed it, but that's just what I assumed. We had the talk again, and she got really upset with me. She said, I've seen her before. She's in there. She told me that her sister looks different than us and has blonde hair and blue eyes with little holes in her cheeks, aka dimples. My daughter, husband, and I all have very dark hair, chocolate brown eyes, and no dimples. I talk to her about wanting a sibling and tell her that when I finish school, we'll try to give her a little brother or sister. Again, she's yelling, I already have a sister. I was expecting to start my period within the next week like clockwork. I didn't. I took a pregnancy test and just stared at that faint positive result for what felt like forever. I was completely in shock. I was on birth control, so... Immediately, I called my doctor and they saw me the next day. It was estimated that I was four weeks and six days pregnant. I gave birth to a blonde haired, blue eyed little girl with the sweetest dimples. This experience has always blown my mind. Growing up in Jacksonville as a kid, I was living about a mile from a preserve and national park. Being that the area was known as a historic monument with Spanish forts and old naval bases, there were battles fought there. 
in which tons of Native Americans and Spanish died essentially in my backyard. Around the time of being six to eight years old, I had night terrors met with sleep paralysis events in which I would see a human-like shadow in my room. The latter only happened twice. During those two occasions, I remember seeing it emerge from the corner of my room. And during the first event, it just stayed in place. It had no remarkable features, with only the outlining of its body being a darker barrier that defined a human outline. Head, torso, legs, arms, and maybe hands. However, the second time this happened, I immediately had an elevated heart rate, and I started panicking out of fear. Most likely, I had woken from a nightmare. I was positioned on my left side, with the shadowy guy facing my peripheral on the right, and this time it started walking toward me, getting in my bed, and holding me with its hand on my chest. From that, I was in a total panic attack, to the point that I could hear my blood pumping in my ears. After a while, I guess I just fell asleep. Maybe I passed out, I honestly don't remember. Even with all of that, I don't think I told my mom at the time. Though now I tell her about both of these experiences all the time. She kind of just says, well, maybe that did happen. Or maybe it was just a vivid nightmare. Nowadays, I look back on that with a sort of mystified perspective. Growing up, our household was really stressful for a child. There was a lot of parental fighting on a daily basis, especially with my dad being an alcoholic. He didn't abuse me, not physically, but all of that torment did lead to a divorce when I was about 13. I've never spoken with a therapist about this or anything, but I do feel like those events were likely a product of the stress. As a bonus, whenever I would talk to my dad about it later, he confirmed to me that he saw a squatting human figure up in the rafters while we lived there, well before he went through DTs. Rest in peace to the man. On May 3rd, 2017, my life was pretty similar to how it is now. I'm a bartender in a smallish beach town in Florida, so I know most people who frequent the bars in our downtown area, either as other service industry workers or patrons. I also have always lived within walking distance to work and the strip of bars and restaurants. That being said, I was 23 at the time and constantly hung out with a pretty large group of friends and coworkers and going out almost daily after work. Although this absolutely made no sense from the beginning, I thought for a while that there might be an explanation to what I experienced. If there is, I never got one. And I'm 100% sure that I do not know the person who this mystery item belonged to, but let me back up. I was going through my trunk before a camping trip one day with a guy I was dating, who lived in the apartments across the street from mine. As we're clearing things out, we find a large black duffel bag stuffed in the very back of the trunk. Upon opening it, I discovered it was full of various soccer gear, cleats, socks, safety pads, and a jersey with a name I didn't recognize on it. I had zero recollection of anyone putting anything in my trunk. I don't have any friends who play soccer, and I never have. The name on the jersey is one that I've literally never heard of, even now and searching on social media didn't yield any results. The guy who I was dating at the time thought that I was lying and thought that it was from another guy I was hanging out with or had hung out with and dated in the past. He didn't believe me that I had no idea how it got there, who the person whose name was on the jersey was, and didn't hang out with anyone who played soccer. That drove me even more insane because I literally didn't even discover the bag in the trunk on my own previously. This was the first time I had ever seen it. I asked every person that I was around regularly as well, as well as pretty much anyone I'd seen in the past month. No one had any clue what I was talking about or recognized the name on the jersey. 
please note that there are no spare keys for my car, and I never let anyone drive my car. I always keep it obsessively locked, and my car has never been broken into. I ended up throwing the bag away a couple of years afterwards. I kept it in my trunk forever, hoping that the mystery would solve itself eventually, but no. This will forever drive me nuts. To this day, I have no idea who that person is or how that stuff got into my trunk. So, I always thought this was strange. I even told people about it, but chalked it up to people working overnight or something. But now, I'm not so sure. I worked for one of the biggest tech companies for about 10 years. I traveled a lot and sometimes taught workshops. I remember visiting Puerto Rico to deliver a workshop. I was really impressed with the people in the office. They were serving lunch on silver dishes and had a really classy atmosphere. It was a company location, so there were no customers in the office. One strange thing that happened, but not necessarily weird, was after eating lunch with the students, I'd started teaching again. And little by little, the office people would just casually walk in, right past the projector and me lecturing and grab lunch. I wasn't mad, I actually found it kind of funny. Besides, the staff had some good looking and generally nice people, so there's that too. The strange part was that I remember after one class cleaning up for the night and visiting the bathroom before leaving, and I noticed that it was a bit aged. Maybe leaking faucets and water stains, nothing gross, but it was definitely an old bathroom. There were several stalls and urinals. Now, I left likely at around five o'clock and the office was closing down. The next day when I visited that bathroom, it was completely different and looked brand spanking new. I'm talking marble, tile, everything looked like it had literally been done overnight. I remember mentioning this and really getting no response from anybody. That night was when the oil refinery blew up. I booked my flight a day early and got out. I was afraid that it was either an attack or the smoke would force the airport to be closed down, which would cause havoc with me trying to get home. I never did figure out what was going on there with that bathroom or with the people. Looking back on it, maybe they weren't real either, or maybe it was some kind of glitch. I've mentioned this a few times to people over the years as a funny story, thinking that they had actually remodeled this bathroom overnight. But now that I think of it, there's no possible way that they did that. I was leaving when the office was getting ready to close. There were no signs, no workers coming in, and no recollection of the employees the next day. Plus, this work wasn't just a makeover. Like I said, it was granite counters, tile walls, the works. It was just very strange. About two days ago, I had a craving for McDonald's. It was around 10.30 or 11 at night, so I went out and got my food and was headed back home. I usually go through a back alley to get to the front of my house faster. This night was no different, but to give you a picture, it's a back alleyway with houses on one side and a field on the other. Anyway, I'm heading home and I take the back alley going about 30 kilometers an hour. Everything is good, when suddenly a person steps in front of my view, coming from the field side. He was maybe five or ten feet away, so I slammed on my brakes so as not to hit the guy, and I didn't. I was sure of it, but the guy wasn't in my view anymore, so I panicked a little, put the car in park, and got out to see and apologize for not seeing him earlier. Like I said, he wasn't there. I walked out to the front of the car, no dents. I looked under the vehicle and there was nothing there. I moved back a couple of steps to see if there was anyone in the field. I called out, but I got no answer. 
So I brushed it off as much as one could and I turned around to head back to my car. And that's when I saw myself. Granted, it was a shadow because he was standing right next to my door and I had the headlight aiming at me. I was in front of my vehicle. I asked, are you all right? I'm so sorry. I got no answer. The figure was just standing there. I said hello and still no answer. So I waved my hand and said, Yoo-hoo! And he did the same. He waved his hand, but said nothing. It was freaky, because it was a mirror image of my hand motion. It really caught me off guard, so I stepped back, and so did the shadow. It was so weird. So I walked toward him, and he did the same. And as soon as he was in range of the light, he was gone. No puff of smoke, no blur, just there one minute, and in the blink of an eye, gone. I was not about to look around anymore. I opened my door and got in, and I drove back home. I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. A few years ago, I temporarily lived in a cabin out in the woods with my friend due to some unexpected life circumstances. One night, we had another friend over, and all three of us had a smoke session in the backyard at about 3 a.m. That was when we started to hear a strange noise in the woods. It kind of sounded like a humming engine coming closer to us. Suddenly, my friend shouts in confusion as he explains that he briefly got blinded by a distant light. A few seconds later, my other friend notices a flying object near the treetops, about 40 meters away. When he points out that the object is see-through and that you can actually see the outlines of the treetops behind it, we are all just stunned and we just look in awe, in complete silence, until the object spirals away super fast up toward the sky in a manner that is certainly not possible with any known technology we have. Then it disappeared. We rushed inside, and my friend had the brilliant idea to have everybody draw what they had seen simultaneously without looking at each other's to confirm what we saw. We all showed our pictures at the same time, and we all drew the exact same thing. We kicked ourselves over not recording the event for proof, but later realized that all of us had left our phones inside while going out to smoke. We joked about the light scanning us to see if we had any recording devices on us. We all went to bed, with both of them sleeping upstairs, and with myself being downstairs, alone. As I lay down, pondering over the experience and feeling a bit uneasy, I suddenly see two orbs floating around the room. One was red, and one was blue. I get a bit freaked out and pretend to be asleep while I watch these orbs float around for about five minutes, then they disappeared. Eventually, I fell asleep, and when I woke up the next day, I was eager to share my experience. They informed me that when they woke up and went outside, the door handle crumbled in their hands, like all of the components of the door handle had been dismantled. It was a very surreal experience overall. Aliens, advanced technology not known to the public, I don't know, but it certainly gives me this childlike hope that there's more to this life than the dull reality we live in. This happened probably about two years ago, except my memory of when it happened is really hazy and I struggle to place it on my timeline. I would say I was about 15 years old and it was the middle of the night. I live in a two-story house and the second story is quite high 
so I sleep with the curtains wide open as I like to look at the stars. For reference, the window that's in this room takes up almost the whole wall. I woke up one night and my room was completely bright. My bed is in the corner opposite the window and all I could see out in my window was a blinding light taking up the entire window. My bedroom was completely lit up and I could barely look out the window because it was like looking into the sun. I sat there for probably about two minutes absolutely paralyzed with fear before I decided to grab my phone and film it. The second I grabbed my phone, the light went out and my room went back to dark. I couldn't make out anything through the window as my eyes had to adjust since it had been so bright. And once I could see, after about maybe a minute, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I wrote myself a note to look at in the morning because I needed evidence that it hadn't been a dream. I eventually got back into bed and tried to sleep, but the adrenaline and fear kept me up for hours. I managed to fall asleep eventually, and when I woke up, the note was exactly where I left it. I spoke to my family, but they were all adamant that they hadn't seen or heard anything. I have explored every logical possibility including sleep paralysis and night terrors, and even the possibility that I was hallucinating. But I've never hallucinated before, and I haven't since. I have no history of mental illness other than depression, which I wasn't struggling with at the time. And the same with night terrors and sleep paralysis. The note I left myself has proved to me that I wasn't asleep when it happened. This was during a time when I had some weird experiences happening while I was asleep. I would wake up with strange bruises and scratches all over my body almost every day. My memories from around that time are very hazy, and I can only remember bits and pieces. That time of my life is almost blurry to me, and I usually have an excellent memory. Any possible explanations? The summer after my second year in high school, I went up to Pike National Forest in Colorado for a summer field biology camp. It was pretty cool because I'd never been camping prior. I had a small two-man tent that I shared with my buddy from school. We had met this kid at camp and instantly became really good friends. His parents were loaded and his tent, which was about 10 feet from us, was huge, like a 10-person tent. The night before this incident, a huge windstorm blew through the valley and absolutely annihilated his huge tent. Mine was fine because it was low to the ground. Anyway, for the rest of the time, he slept in our already packed tent. I slept closest to the door of the tent because I always had to pee in the middle of the night and I didn't want to have to climb over people. So the night this all went down, I woke up, no idea what time it was, went outside to the forest, peed, and crawled back into the tent. I was laying there for a bit, and there happened to be a lightning storm overhead, cloud to cloud. As I was watching the light illuminate my tent, I started hearing whispering. It was female whispering, back and forth. I tried to hear what it was saying, but it was unintelligible. The whispering started to get closer and closer until it was right next to the tent by my right ear. It just stopped. I didn't hear anyone walking or anything like that. Then all of a sudden, lightning lit up the tent and there were shadows of people cast onto the side of the tent. That's when the chanting began. It sounded like a different language, all female voices and a bunch of them. I just closed my eyes and slipped under my sleeping bag, terrified, and put my hands over my ears. The next day after breakfast, we all went back to the tent to get changed, and the new guy who was now staying with us says, Pretty wild last night, right? To which I responded, You mean the lightning? He said, No, the frickin' scary chanting. I think this place is cursed or something. So it wasn't just me. 
but it did help that someone else had heard it and we could talk about it. Now, every time I go camping, I stop drinking anything two hours before I plan to sleep so that I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to pee because I am not going out there. For almost 10 years, a few other people in my family and I have had very extreme paranormal experiences. Most of it is too long to get into now. A lot of it is tied to a house that's demonically possessed, and possibly a deceased family member who was quite emotionally disturbed and dabbled way too much in the wrong parts of the occult. But last night, I had a very intense dream. In it, this feminine demonic creature thing was over my grandfather in his sleep. I went to go fight it, and it screamed at me like a banshee. I backed away for a second, right before I woke up. Like I said, this thing felt very feminine, but to describe how it looked is a little bit difficult. It looked almost as though a large, roughly human-sized sheet of leather became sentient and started floating and moving and flying. It didn't have a solid, discernible form exactly either. It literally almost looked like a flying leather monster. It was so black, roughly around where its head might have been, that it was more black than black itself, if that makes any sense. But besides that, like I said, it just sort of looked like a flying leather monster. And then, of course, there was the horrible, threatening scream. I've had other encounters in my sleep with evil paranormal entities at this point, and it's pretty much all connected to that certain house, and possibly that family member. But I'm just wondering what it was. Was it actually a banshee? There's also this wolf that has been stalking around the house for a few months now. It attacked our dog, actually. The house is in Connecticut, but it's in the north, where it's very condensed forest. So it's extremely uncommon, but not unfathomable, that a rogue wolf ended up there. I personally saw a mountain lion there once, and I've seen my fair share of black bears. But I don't know what this thing could have been. I haven't actually lived in the house in question for about four years. Other family still does, though. I don't know what's going on, and I've never seen an entity like that thing before. I'm just trying to figure out if anybody might know what it is. This happened over 30 years ago so I'll explain the incident as best as I can remember. When I was three, my grandma on my maternal side died of a heart attack. While at the funeral, the adults were outside talking, smoking cigarettes, etc. Myself, my older brother, and another family member close to our age were told to stay inside to keep us out of conversations that we didn't need to hear, according to my parents. Well, the other family member convinced my brother that locking me in the viewing room with those red lights over the coffin on was a good idea. Once they locked me in, the other family member called through the door that grandma needed to take me with her because I was her favorite. I screamed and cried as loud as my little self could, and some adults took me outside to my parents. I was told that they were just playing and that even though grandma loved me, she was never going to take me away. They were doing their best to soothe a very upset three-year-old. Later that year, we moved two states away from there. One night in the new house, four years later, I woke up in the middle of the night. According to my mom, this was very unusual. I heard a song that only my grandma sang to me. I sat up looking around and I see the lid on my old toy box opening by itself. 
Once it was fully open, I saw what looked like my grandma standing slowly from inside that box. She turned slowly and creepily around to look at me. I was frozen in place. I couldn't cry. I couldn't scream. I couldn't even move. Then she started walking toward me. She stepped close to the bed and said, I came to get you. You were always my favorite, and now I want you to be with me. Somehow I found my voice and screamed. My mom came running in, and just before she got to my room, my grandma said, I'll come back for you again, and vanished. My mother came in, asking who I was talking to. I told her everything. My mom let me sleep in the living room for a few nights while she got rid of my toy box. The toy box was the last thing my grandma had ever given me before she died. To this day, I have no idea what happened. All I know is that wasn't grandma. The year was 1976. We were living in the Middle East. My father was in the secret police called Savak. It was common that a helicopter would land in our backyard and pick my dad up for a mission or something like that. One night, I saw a bright light and it got my attention. I thought it was my dad returning home on the helicopter landing in the backyard, but I guess it wasn't. But I don't remember anything after the light got really close. I woke up in bed the next day. Well, I thought it was the next day, but I found out that a few days had actually passed. My father was standing next to my bed with two well-dressed men. One was American, I think, and the other was a translator. He introduced one of them as Mr. John and told me they wanted to talk to me. I was confused and they asked a lot of weird questions. Soon after my dad took me, my brother and sister moved us to the UK. We lived there for three years until my next strange encounter. Once again, one of the original two men, Mr. John, with a new guy, questioned me once more. A few months later on the 4th of July, 1979, we moved to the US and we have lived here ever since. As time went by, I asked my dad questions about the moving and the men questioning me but he would never talk about it until recently when he was diagnosed with dementia. The things he said were incredible, too incredible to be true. I thought it was the drugs or the disease. I thought that's pretty cool if it was true, but there's no way. Well, he's in a nursing home here in Laguna Hills, California, and I went to go visit him. When I walked into his room, to my surprise, he had a visitor. A man. Not just any man, but the one that had met with me twice before. A face that I'll always remember. The only problem was that the last time I saw him was 35 to 40 years prior, and he hadn't aged a day. I was older than him. He saw me, pulled his cap down to cover his face, and left without a word. I asked my dad who he was, and he said to me, that's Mr. John. And remember, buy Safe Moon. I can't make heads or tails of it to this day. I will start by saying I was a devout skeptic before this experience. It has changed me. It was the summer of 2016, a few months after my sister was born, and my family and I had some old family friends over at our house. We'd been hanging out nearly all day, and it was getting to be around the time of sunset. My friend and I, who I'll refer to as Adam, went on a walk to the ponds in my neighborhood and stayed there for what I remember being about 30 to 45 minutes, just enough time for it to become dark enough to see the stars. At this point, we begin the short walk back to my house, 
when I noticed a star in the sky, which appeared to be moving. I tell Adam this, and he says that he too can see it. At this point, we're standing at the end of my driveway, looking up at the sky. We watch the star for roughly five minutes, when we notice two other stars, all of which are moving toward each other at around the same speed. Now this is where it begins to get really weird. Adam pulls out his phone and attempts to record it, but it ends up being too dimly lit for his phone's camera to see, sadly. Nearly immediately after Adam had put his phone away, all of the stars had stopped in a blank patch of sky, devoid of all other lights and stars, and formed a large triangle. These lights then began moving as one unit and turning clockwise in the sky. They remained in this formation and movement for nearly five minutes before stopping, then proceeded to move at a speed which I've never seen before, away from each other, and disappeared into the night. Based on the reactions of people back at the house, both Adam and I were visibly shaken up. When we tried to explain what had happened, they shrugged it off, as us just not knowing what we saw. I know what I saw, and so does Adam. Green Cove Springs has a history of military and government establishments and compounds, none of which are currently active. However, there is a significant amount of military infrastructure still in use as housing and places of business. It makes me wonder if this had something to do with some sort of test flight. Either way, we saw what we saw, even if we don't know what it is. This story is from my brother-in-law. It took place in Mexico in the 90s. My brother-in-law, Uriel, and his family had a house on the corner of the street. His parents always worked and never had time to do the house chores or look after Uriel, so they hired a housekeeper and nanny. The nanny was a girl who was around 12 years old. It was acceptable back then to hire young kids in that area. Uriel said that in the beginning, everything was great and she did all of her chores. The house was pretty big, so it was pretty impressive that at her age, she was able to keep up with all that work. The family was content with her work and the girl was always happy to help. In the house, there was a big staircase that led up to a second story. Uriel said that as soon as you got onto the top step, there was a large Victorian mirror which was recently given to his parents by some acquaintances. The family started noticing that the girl would always glance at the mirror. The glances then escalated, and she began staring at the mirror from afar. Soon she would stare, to the point where she would stop doing her chores entirely, and just stay there for hours at a time. She stopped speaking to anyone, and did nothing else but stare at the mirror, she even stopped eating and sleeping. The family became very concerned and alerted her family. When her family came to pick her up, they couldn't separate the girl from the mirror. She was in sort of a hypnotized state. They took her to the local witch doctor, and the witch doctor said something in there had taken her, that it had just left her body behind, and that nothing could be done. She was in a vegetative state and remained like that for some days. It would all come to an end when Uriel's family ordered to have the mirror stored in the basement. At one point, one of the few people moving it somehow stepped on the mirror and it broke. It shattered into many pieces. Seconds later, the girl's family called Uriel's family, saying that the girl had been convulsing and that she passed away. It was very sad, and the family was devastated. To this day, he still doesn't like talking about it, because it scared him so much.
For this next story, Reddit user PrestigiousNeck873 recounts their mom's tale about a rather heartwarming paranormal encounter. Here's her story. My grandma unfortunately passed away around five years ago. She was living here with my grandpa, and they were both on my mom's side. Unfortunately, again yesterday, my grandfather passed. What makes this a ghost story, though, is what happened twice the night before their passing. The night after my grandma passed, my mom had a very vivid dream that she told us about. The dream started with my grandma coming out of her room. My mom was in tears asking her, Mom, are you okay? And grandma reassured her multiple times, Don't worry, don't worry, I'm fine. My mom looks down and notices that my grandma's oxygen tank wasn't plugged in. She wasn't connected to it. My mom had said, Mom, your oxygen. My grandma just looked at her endearingly and said, Oh, I don't need that thing anymore. And then my mom woke up. Fast forwarding to more recently, my grandpa has been very sick. He gave up on his health and took very poor care of himself and wouldn't accept any help. He often said that he wanted to die. My mom tried so hard to get him to change his life and go to a hospital, but he wouldn't go or take any medicine. One day, we heard nothing coming from his room. We could usually hear a TV on, him coughing once in a while, but there was just nothing. At that point, he was gone, but we didn't know that yet. That night, she had another dream, but this time with my grandpa. He walked out of his room and made his way to the restroom, and Mom asked, Oh my gosh, are you okay? We hadn't heard from you. He smiled and looked at her and said, Yes, don't worry. We're okay now. My mom described him clearly smiling with tears in his eyes. She woke up the next day, ran into the room, and found him passed away. What makes it crazier is that both dreams happened the night of the day that they passed away, even though my mom hadn't known yet that they were gone. May they rest in peace. I was out walking the woods at an ungodly hour of the morning. I believe it was around 1 to 2 in the morning. Last year, I was working at a church youth camp in Wisconsin. The camp was on two sides of a highway, and a tunnel under the highway connected the two sides of the camp, so that the campers could more readily access the other side. My then-girlfriend and our friend liked to walk the woods at night after we were done with work. The first time we had done this, we were scared shitless by a fox barking. The deer in the woods were fairly docile and didn't spook easily. We soon learned to identify the sound of the fox, and we saw it several times. One night, it was just me and my ex-girlfriend walking through the woods. As we rounded a corner in the trail, I noticed movement in the field by the tunnel. Gray shapes. I assumed they were deer, and I pointed them out to my girlfriend. We continued our walk past the tunnel. Just as we passed the entrance to the tunnel, maybe about 20 yards, we heard the most horrendous screeching. It sounded as if somebody was being strangled. It did not sound at all like the fox, but we shrugged it off. We continued up the road. All of a sudden, I had this weird feeling, and I turned around to see a tall figure standing in the road. It was dressed in white, and it was all hazy. I wondered if I was a little too tired and was seeing things, so I poked my girlfriend and asked her to take a look behind us. She immediately noticed it too. Something we both noted was that our eyes kept sliding off the figure. It was like we couldn't keep our vision centered on it. I was thinking this and she voiced it without me saying anything to her. I pulled my hunting knife from its sheath, but I somehow knew that it wouldn't do anything. Without looking away from the thing, I said, let's go, now. We backed away and then started running, and we didn't stop until we were back to the cabins. 
When I got back inside the cabin, the guy in the bunk next to me was still up texting his girlfriend. I quickly told him what I had seen. He looked at me and said, that's why I don't go out at night. I never went back out into those woods at night again. And when I talk about this, I still get chills and a nervous feeling. We had no drugs or alcohol. We were both under 21 and we were working at a church camp with strict policies. So I have no idea what we saw. So when I was 20 and in the army, I was sent to my first duty station in Germany. The barracks we lived in were converted old five-story buildings that were supposedly once the headquarter buildings for the Nazi party. From what we were told, the basement of the building that I lived in had been converted into our armory. However, supposedly, it had once been filled with ovens and a gas chamber. Apparently, a lot of people died in that building. There were all kinds of underground tunnels below our caserne that had outbuildings on base. They were, of course, off limits, but we snuck in some anyway. Aside from the underground tunnels, the building that we lived in was super creepy. I was on the very top floor. My friends and I would be in a room watching a movie and doors would fling open. We all had strange experiences. I would get woken up regularly by something nudging me and calling my name. I would wake up and see figures in my room. I would hear footsteps in the attic above my room almost every night. It became normal for me. As I'm telling this story, I'm getting creeped out. Anyway, one night around two or three in the morning, I got woken up by a nudge and I see all these lights on in the hallway from under my bedroom door. Then I hear tons of people walking in the hallway, like a crowd of people. I thought, what the heck? Are we having an alert? That's a random deployment readiness inspection that happens early in the morning. I thought maybe nobody told me. I threw on my uniform and opened the door and it was completely dark. There wasn't a single light on, and nobody was in the hallway. I thought I was going crazy. It's the weirdest thing that's happened to me. I really just stood there in shock. I had no idea what was going on. I went back to bed, thinking I had completely lost my mind. I never told my friends, because I thought I was losing it. I guess it can all be attributed to dreaming or sleepwalking, or a half-awake state. I mean, I know there's a reasonable explanation for everything, but honestly, in my heart, I know those barracks were haunted. My dad grew up in the 70s in a wooded area in Maine. It was a tiny neighborhood with woods surrounding the outer part. My dad had all sorts of unexplained activity in his mother's house, but this is the one that stuck with me. My dad was around nine or 10. He couldn't sleep. Right beside his bed was a window and he could easily look out it from his bed. He heard noises outside, and he got excited because he thought it was a moose or some wild animal. So he whipped open the shade. There was no moose. Looking back at my father was a little boy his age, maybe a little bit younger. He wasn't sure exactly what he was seeing. It was very foggy. But it was undeniable that he was looking at a little boy. A little redhead boy with overalls on and one of those stupid propeller hats. My dad wanted to close the shade and pretend that he had never seen him, but he just could not look away. The boy smiled and waved and began to walk away, becoming harder for my dad to see. Eventually, 
the boy disappeared into the fog. It was dark, and there was this thick fog. It was easy for my dad to convince himself that he imagined the whole thing. I think little kids find it easier to convince themselves that nothing has happened, that they just have an overactive imagination. I mean, that's what adults always tell children anyway. My dad was over at a friend's house a few days later. They were outside shooting BB guns, normal kids in the 70s, freedom type playing. The friend's dad was working on a car. My dad tells his friend this story, thinking that they would both laugh at how silly my dad was. My dad told the friend, but he didn't laugh. His eyes got wide and all the color drained from his face. The friend books it over to his dad. My dad panics a little bit, thinking that his friend was telling his dad that he was trying to scare him and that my dad would get in trouble for it. Instead, the boy runs up to his dad and says, Dad, Dad, he saw the boy with the funny hat too. It was Christmas Eve, 2019. I had gotten into a drunken argument and I had to spend 24 hours, Christmas Day, in an empty, silent cell. I was hungover at the time and had been beaten by police for exercising in my cell. Well, after staring at the blank walls for so long, in my state of utter misery, I saw fairies. I don't believe in fairies or anything else paranormal and yet there they were, flying around my cell little female figures with dragonfly wings. They never spoke, as far as I can remember. They just flew around the room and I played with them. They were semi-transparent, colorfully dressed, and I could not touch them. They were about the length of a hand, around 10 inches roughly. They had come to keep me company and keep me sane, I decided. I saw them only for a minute or so, and then they were gone. After this, I decided that they had merely been figments of a traumatized and understimulated mind, as jail cells are designed to be unpleasant, and the mind can create things in those lonely situations. I never saw them again, until this morning, exactly two years later. I awoke this Christmas morning to the exact same fairies flying around my room. I saw one clearly. She smiled and flew around me and I remembered her like an old friend. My mother entered my room and in a haze, I told her that the fairies had come to visit again. She assumed that I was dreaming, but I was very much awake. Where I live in Southwest England, fairies are something that many people believe in and have done for centuries. After the first event, I recently visited a nearby haunted jail and I learned that one old woman escaped her cell with no plausible explanation. For the rest of her days, she swore up and down that the fairies had helped her. But to me, they are nothing more than fiction, something I never even think about. I suppose it could be some sort of trauma, as every Christmas Eve since then, I've had nightmares of running from the police like I did that night. I like to consider more rational explanations, but then, I'm starting to think that I do believe in fairies, and I hope they will visit me again, maybe next Christmas. It's been well over a year since I last saw a gnome I have epilepsy, so I'm never sure if it's just my brain fabricating things, but I've never hallucinated due to seizures that I know of. That all being said, I once went to a psychic who did Akashic record readings. She told me that I was closely connected to earth spirits. I made no mention to her about seeing gnomes because, well, that makes you sound absolutely bonkers. For a short period of time, my ex and I lived at his late grandfather's house. 
The property was teeming with Japanese maples and native plants. He also kept an orchid room. One day, while taking a shower, I heard the bathroom door move, and I saw a little drably dressed old man, about one and a half feet tall, run through the bathroom and climb out the open window. It scared the crap out of me. I let out a yelp. My ex came running in, and so as not to be taken for even more medical testing than I'd already been through, when he asked me what happened, I just told him I'd slipped. Another thing I once saw may have been a troll, but I'm not sure. I have no idea what it was. Maybe one of you can enlighten me. I had been doing a lot of meditating, three hours or so, and I headed into my bedroom to change for the gym. I opened my closet, and there was this three and a half to four foot naked, wrinkly, elf-type troll thing. I gasped and backed up, and it disappeared. Since both sightings mentioned here, I've had more than one CT scan, MRIs, etc. My seizures were a result of head trauma that happened well after what I'll refer to as the troll incident. There are other times that I have seen them as well. Once in childhood, I had an encounter with my late Noni, and a few encounters with my grandfather who died when I was four. Again, my brain has been scanned a lot in multiple ways, and nothing has ever been found other than some white spots from chronic migraines, and those popped up super recently. I've also been evaluated by a neuropsychologist, and nothing other than my seizures, due to the head trauma, has ever been wrong with me. Like I said, the head trauma happened way after I saw the troll or gnome or whatever it was. I don't know what these things are, but what do you think? To be fair, I don't know if this is paranormal or somebody playing a prank on me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts all the same. I've lived in the same studio apartment for four years now, and along one wall is a closet with a mirrored sliding door. I've never cleaned this mirror since I never really touch it, so it doesn't have any smudges on it or anything like that. At least, I never noticed any smudges on it, until tonight. Last night, I was cooking in my apartment with the windows closed. It was a cold night, and because of the steam from the food, it's all one room, so the kitchen is in the same room as my closet, I noticed that my mirror had gotten a bit fogged up. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but as I was walking by the mirror today, I noticed that the top part of my mirror was still a bit foggy looking, and I could see words written on the mirror as if somebody had drawn them with their finger or the eraser of a pencil since the lines are fairly thin. The printing is neat, like teacher writing. The lettering doesn't resemble the handwriting of anybody I know. I assumed that the person who had lived in the apartment before me had traced out words along the top of the mirror and that the steam from the cooking had only just now revealed them. I was curious about what the former resident had to say so I picked up an index card and a clipboard and started copying out what the words said. It was tough because they were faint. They only showed up when the light in the room wasn't shining directly on them, and the first part of the writing was a bit obscured. They said in all lowercase letters, being dead isn't being alive. I'm not really sure what to think. It seems kind of tautological. Obviously being dead isn't being alive, right? I mean, by definition. But I'm curious about how the writing got there, and a little freaked out. In all the time I've lived here, the only person who's ever been in the house when I wasn't home is my mom, and she wouldn't do that. And even if she did, it wasn't her handwriting. Every other person who's been in the apartment has been there at the same time as me, and I think that I would have noticed somebody writing on my mirror. So I'm at a bit of a loss. Maybe the previous resident just left a spooky message to mess with me and I never saw it until now. Or maybe my little apartment is haunted. What do you think? <laughs> 